Peggy 16. どちらが立っているかそれだけだ Welcome back, everybody, and welcome. My name is Ketchup, joined on commentary once again by Mustard, as always. And this is the Tekken 7 UK Championship London Qualifier Top 8. Interesting at the moment, where some of our players in this Top 8 have already qualified. However, some of these players have not, which means that it's a bit of a free-for-all on that lower end of the bracket. And three spots up for grabs for the Comic-Con Finals. In a couple of weeks, there's a lot to play for. So what this means is we have Top 8, four winners, four losers. All four of our top eight winners have currently qualified for the finals, which means out of the three spots up for grabs, the four players in our losers bracket are currently eligible for them. What this means is, in our losers bracket top eight, whoever wins their first match down there will be guaranteed a spot, and then we will do a seventh place playoff between the two losers of those first matches in losers side top eight. So, our losers bracket action is actually gonna be the most important this top eight so far. For the purpose of this tournament as a tournament, it's gonna be about who takes that crown and riding yep. momentum into the, the finals. However, for the purpose of who's gonna qualify, that's where things get really interesting. But while we get set up, just remind you all that Tekken 7 comes out on June the 2nd, and that's not far away. It comes out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And if you pre-order, you get access to Eliza for free, on top of a whole bunch of other cool stuff as well. Well, looks like our first game is going to be Asim versus Kane and Trench. Kane and Trench is on a bit of a rampage through the UK right now, looking, uh, I kind of, it's fair to say unstoppable, but I don't want to put the, the chap on a pedestal, but I think he's kind of earned that right at the moment, uh, being thoroughly unstoppable. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> overall. You can, you can say that. I mean, there's no other way to say We've it. Been the guy all is just all dominant. Over. We've been all over the UK for this UK championship, winning Scotland, Ireland, we've been in Manchester, Birmingham, and now London. Kane and Trench has been present at most of those, and every qualifier he's entered, he's gone home with that first place spot. So you can say this guy is dominant. That's one of the many words you can use to describe. However, this is winner's bracket action to be facing off against Asim. So, you know, it's not going to be easy. No, definitely not. Asim looking like he's running Steve Fox all tournament so far, looking like he's going to be running this for the long haul. Bubsy was saying that Asim used to play a load of Steve in Tekken 5, but uh, hasn't played him. Uh, a lot in between five and now. But obviously, Tekken being a legacy fighting game, you can play characters in other Tekkens and have a, a base understanding of what they do and how to use them. Uh, it's mainly just their, their unique features to Tekken 7 that you kind of have to get accustomed to. But Asim looking super comfortable today with this character being very aggressive, very dominant at the same time. So wow. is Kane and Trench. It's going to be a clash of the aggression. Let's go. Top eight. Tekken 7 UK Championship London qualifier. 
All right, so almost immediately in with the grab. But Kane and Trench, you I mean you really can't count this count this guy out at any point. He's been on the back foot so many times and has found ways to pull it back. But immediately in with the knowledge, knowing he can crouch that new string. Already a really strong lefty for Asim. Round one, starting off very strong. Gets a grab, no tech from Kane and Trench. Oh wow. oh wow, wake up kick. Unfortunately, doesn't quite get the conversion and a swift punish. Unfortunately, doesn't get the flash. And very dominantly, Asim taking that first round. He's going to be checking in with the mid. Yoshimitsu, I mean, he actually has got some really nice mid tools now since Tekken 7, giving him a whole bunch of new changes from previous games. He's got to be careful. I mean, he can't really overcommit. Speaking of which, immediately in with the crouch on that string once again. Oh, another throw. The tech from Ken Trench again. Asim getting a lot of mileage out of him so far. I mean, a lot. I don't think Kane and Trench is really going to overextend too much, especially against someone that hits as hard as Steve does. Yeah, you can't really afford to, especially in the hands of someone like Asim that just takes away so much damage if you just give him the opportunity to. But as you can see, I mean, it really is kind of like Ken, he's not pressing those buttons. He's really waiting for that magical moment. As I say that, Asim still pressing the advantage, but a good block on the low. This could be the start of something. Nah, wow. unsafe. Unsafe stuff gets punished easily. But I think it's just kind of tactical patience there. We saw Ken and Trench go for the flash, which normally he has almost like a you know 10 out of 10 success rate on them, but that's two for two in this game so far that haven't worked. And so Asim is just being patient. Immediately in with another crouch. Ken and Trench looking kind of uncomfortable, and Asim another just one. doing all the right things. And another grab. Asim all over Kane and Trench right now. He seems very prepared for this matchup. You can tell that he's prepared to fight this kind of Yoshimitsu. Wow, and there's another parry. Flash didn't miss. Has to wow. be so careful, Rage Drive, he's going to get good damage here. I don't think he's going to quite kill because there's no wall. Very close though. Oh, goes oh. to the Oki and he gets it. Now, this is the strength of Kane and Trench, is his composure. This is not the first time we've seen him two rounds down. I mean, like, he's been match point against him two rounds down. He doesn't let rounds being up. And another flash. Face. I mean, that's the respect. Ken and Trench, he, he's just so confident in it. Oh, it's wow. almost like the more the flash misses, the more likely he is to go for it. The wake up rage is going to connect for sure. But this is going to spend Asim's rage. He's not going to have access to the rage drive or the enhanced damage anymore. Not going to even out the life either by itself. So Ken and Trench still with the dominant life lead. Bear in mind, one solid launch from this health is absolutely going to seal it. So the rage drive was a good idea. As I say that, down forward one seals that. And two rounds each. Game number one, I think we expected this result. We'll have to see who can close it out though. Because at the end of the day, Ken and Trench was massively down. Yeah, conversion. Full confirm. Goes into the tailspin. Scaling quite heavily. Misses the ender. Yeah, doesn't quite get the forward two on the end oh, of that. Wow. But parry. Good read. And we've said, you cannot count Kane and Trench out. He's been on the back foot so many times. And just like this, on the verge of three rounds straight against Asim. Another grab. Now against Tech. Asim not letting it get him down. Big launcher, big damage. There's the follow up. Doesn't quite get the ender though. Hang on, he's got rage, but is he going to get a chance? Spins oh, no. on the rage drive, might actually do this. He's probably going to get set up here. There's the block. <gasps> oh no, it's so close. Oh, one hit, no. there's the block. Oh, the trade, Kane and Trench manages to clutch this one out yet again. Three rounds back, off two rounds down, looking like he was going to go out, but no. The composure from Kane and Trench. I think composure is just the word you want to use on that. He took that first game so well but on the back foot so much. But as you mentioned, you I mean, it takes a real player to, to stay in shape in that situation. Kane Trench, definitely doing that. Asim though, looked really, really strong. And Cannot let it phase him. No, Asim came so close to that game, definitely looking like one to watch here. But you can see why Kane Trench is not deterred from doing the, the uh, flash. It needs to be an answer for that extreme aggression that Steve puts on. But the damage he gets off the flash as well, so worth it. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Sit back I've down, none of that. Doesn't overcommit. Oh wow, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, the crouch unfortunately tries to whiff punish the grab, but a little bit too slow in the Twin Pistons to seal that first round. And just like Kenny Trench finds himself up in rounds the set for the first time. That down one, down forward three one, I should say. Really nice little mid check for Yoshimitsu. Little punish, a little bit of damage. Very patient. Oh wow, misses the low, good spacing for Massim to get out of the way of that. It does get the launch, but doesn't get a combo. Might not matter too much. As I said, yeah, Asim does get tagged. So bear in mind, guys, it is two out of three up until the later stages. This is match point for Kane and Trench. After being so con like convincingly down in match one as well, being able to bring this one back. And not only that, but now two rounds up himself. Asim needs to do what Kane just did to him. This is definitely a tall order though, but Asim definitely up for the challenge. Oh, we get some age. That's probably going to connect. Yeah, he went for the grab. That's going to go through. But now, he went for again, the grab. No health was absorbed. 
It is the same thing. This is going to do a nice, nice chunk of damage, but again, massively down on life. And this is infinite stage. Steve might not be able to kill from this health. Oh, jumps over. He's got to be. I mean, this is when it gets really tricky because one more hit might do it. Anything substantial. Patience. Oh, oh wow. wow. No retect. That was a crucial tech. That was game over if it connected. Oh, not quite. If he committed, maybe. Oh, and it's going to seal it. Kane and Trench once again moves on into winner's finals. Looking very hard to touch. I mean, regardless what happens in this top eight, Kane and Trench has found himself minimum top three in every single qualifying event it went to. This is the, I want to say the third. This will be his third in the UK out championship. Of the five. It was, in the UK yeah. championship, this is his third out of the five qualifiers. He's won the other two he's attended, and now he's got minimum third place. And Bear he's in mind, King of uh, Kane Trench won King of Ironfist UK qualifier as well. So it's pretty much every is UK tournament used to winning, I think, once or twice. But I mean, you know, I feel like as the tournaments go on, there are players that really bring it to him. Asim really took it to him in that first game. We saw uh, the truth took it to him in hype spotting Scotland and the Phantom. I mean, just last week, the Phantom in both winners finals and grand finals. Speaking of really the close. Phantom, this brings us into our next winners side top eight match, which is going to be a, a run back from a previous event, Ru Kang versus the Phantom. These guys always have close sets, but the Phantom has started to really Edge over Ru Kang. He's definitely kind of got his number so far in the UK Championship, but it's always close. And uh, always talk to Ru Kang after, and he's you know, always confident, like, you know, yeah, well, didn't go my way, but I know what I did wrong. I know how to, to bounce back from this. And it's getting closer between them. Well, sure. when these guys fought last week, the main thing was that Ru Kang was looking so good. Like, he was in complete control. The first game went dominantly. The next two rounds, just as dominantly. And what happened was, he kind of overextended. He was a bit too anxious or anti to close out the set. He didn't want to take it naturally. He wanted to rush the ending of the set. And Phantom, as each round went by, where unsafe things got punished, Rage Arts connected, little things here and there, and comebacks were made but because that's, of but aggression. That, that is the biggest thing, though. When, uh, when, when reflecting on his losses from last week particularly, Ru Kang was like, that, that definitely seems to be my, my main drawback, is this tendency when I need to get that one last hit. So there's been a week between now and then, uh, between then and now, I should say, Question is, has he made the adjustment? Phantom looking very dominant today, as always. Ru Kang looking cleaner today than we've seen him at any qualifying event so far. Basically walked his way into winner's side top eight. So this is going to be a bit of a clash of the UK Titans so far. While we get this match underway, guys, you at home can get involved in this discussion. Make sure you're tweeting at us using the hashtag T7UK Championship. Let us know what player you want to make it through. Three spots up for grabs, four players in that lower bracket. Only one of them isn't actually going to get a qualification spot. That's going to be a heartbreaker. It is, but <laughs> that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Someone has to be that guy. It's the nature of competition, my friend. It's Indeed. the way it is. Well, we'll find out soon enough, but for now, we are still in winning right action. These guys already qualified. These guys sitting pretty can bring their absolute A game. Well, that's why. The, the comfort zone of qualifying is right there for both these guys, which means that they can be a little bit more free with their decisions. The sort of doubt would normally plague you because it's, you know, everyone's like, you know what? Certain things might be in your brain if you're yet to qualify that might question your judgment in the spur of the moment. Because these guys are qualified, they haven't got it. As you can see, massive respect for both these guys. They go way back in the UK Tekken, but we're going to no doubt see Bob versus Master Raven. Let's go. This is another winner's bracket match. Winner of this moves on into winner's finals to get that extra shot at Kane and Trench. Through Kane taking a quick selfie. <laughs> Loading time is running slim. Might want to hurry it up a little bit. Hey, it's uh, a little bit faster in this build. It's faster than what it once was. All right, so let's go in. Next winner side top eight match in this top eight today. Ru Kang versus the Phantom. Fight. When these guys fought previously, let's not forget Phantom did take it over Ru Kang, but it was a close match. No, definitely. A lot of respect right now. Just sort of sitting pretty at that sort of mid-range. Then again, Ru Kang back is to the wall. This is not a great position to be in. He's going to get rage really early, though. You wonder. Well, Someone as aggressive thing. as Ru Kang might be able to use this. I mean, he's just lost all his health just as fast as he can make the return. He has got rage. Big damage potentially here, but can he do it? Oh, hang on. It connects. Oh, he gets the grab. And just like that, stealing that first round, Ru Kang over the Phantom. Wow, all down to the enhanced damage from Rage. There's twin, a twin, twin Pistons, gonna connect. Gives himself a big life lead here. Phantom back to the wall. This is exactly where Ru Kang wants him. Oh, so much damage. He's managed to get slightly away from the wall. As I say, actually, not at all. What am I talking about? Oh my god, so much damage. 
Wow, and almost a perfect. Now, this is what we saw last week. Ru Kang was incredibly dominant in the first game, but he did get a little bit ahead of himself. Is he going to do it again? Another good throw attack from the Phantom, though. Regardless of the situation, that's still going to be the throw Ru Kang is going to want to go for. Oh, wow, actually almost trying to catch that, but he's completely immune. Now, Phantom, known for his hit and run style, he really thrives across that just sweep distance, just slightly far away. That's where Raven's normals really thrive. It's just a master at being able to know where to place them. Oh, tracking though, track that completely. Oh, well, just like that, Ru Kang finds himself with the wall, but Phantom rolls out, rolls out of the wall. Twin Pistons gonna connect, this is probably gonna be the game. Yeah, definitely, wow, Ru Kang with a convincing game one. Now, however, although that was a dominant game, he cannot get ahead of himself. This is exactly what we saw last week. It is indeed. Phantom was able to keep himself composed. Can he do it again today? I mean, both, find out both of these players really are master of their character, and they have specialized in these characters for many years. Oh, well, phasing all over the place. Phantom, so hard to pin down at the moment. Gets a big grab. Neckbreaker. Now, you sort of wonder what the adjustment is going to be on the side of Phantom, because last week it was a matter of capitalizing on uh, Ru Kang's eagerness to close out. If Ru Kang doesn't overextend, you wonder what Phantom's adjustment will have to well, be. Well, I think a big part of it could be positioning, is just making sure you've got the space behind you to move around, because it seems that as soon as Ru Kang gets him behind a wall, it just seems so much harder for him to do anything. Obviously, much easier said than done, I'm sure, to just simply get away from the wall, but... Look like a Reese. Actually, he's a super strong round for the Phantom. Wow. Yeah, really, really strong reads on the Oki there. Phantom very comfortably taken round one. And a reverse momentum, an important round as well. Really showing that he can take a, he can take rounds this tournament, you know? It's not the end of the straight. It's a bit of a damage though, but just like that, Ru Kang has evened things up. Really looking, I mean, that, that's really smart because that's such an attractive option for Phantom. I think it's the, uh, the running knee that full combos on hit. It's a very good option in the neutral. Again, just taking damage when he can get it, but as you can see right there, not committing to the full string. He knows Phantom's looking for the crouch. He does not want to open himself up too much. Full wow, combo, oh, no. no. Almost got a situation to get it. Phantom's still alive, has rage. This could be, oh no, if he gets a big hit, this could work. But yeah, Ru Kang just not letting it happen. One hit at a time is going to take it down. Evens things up once again. That's why Ru Kang building that space between them. Nice throw tech. However, great answer from Phantom, really quick, not wasting any time. See, Ru Kang goes for that wake-up kick a lot as well. Something only really he does in the UK. He definitely does it a lot more than everyone else. Oh, so much damage, Wow, that damage of Raven to the wall. You can see this is why Phantom didn't change the stage. He benefits from the wall just as much. Plus the size of the stage, he has a nice generous amount in the oh. mid-screen to play around with. That's confirmed. Oh no, too close to the wall though. Still rolling all over him at the moment, wow. Verge of a comeback, both players have range! The range again. again works out! Oh, and there's the block from the Phantom, the low a little bit too obvious in that situation, that I was, guess. I, I think at the same time, that block on the low was an incredibly bold and clutch decision from Phantom. I mean, if he blocked high, that was it, game over. Oh, going for that launcher again, just out of the range. But there's one thing Phantom has really shown us, is just how well he can recover when he's in a bad situation. He lost three rounds straight, and in this game, he looks so much right, more just strong. Just like Ru Kang rolls off the ground into having the wall pressure himself. He's got to watch out. He's going to have rage, though, again. If he's going to be really aggressive, this is what's going to benefit him. Nice throw tech. That would have been make or break. Oh, belly barge hits. Oh, gets the low. One hit could do it here. Yes, he is. He's going to get it. Match point, Ru Kang. You know Ru Kang wants this run back. The Phantom has bested him twice now. He does not want it to happen a third time. If he can go into top 16, proving that he can indeed beat Phantom in tournament, it's going to be a hell of a message. But on the flip side, if Phantom takes over him, what a message in itself. Oh, wow, there's a whiff again. Patience from both these guys. Yeah, but I actually kind of think it's Ru Kang kind of... He is seemingly adjusting. He's really not overextending as much as he did before. Then again, Phantom, nice catch. Even health again. Oh, wow, quick sidestep. A little bit of damage, we'll take it. I mean, a lot of dancing in that sort of <laughs> far distance right now. Both players really not wanting to stick too much out. Power Crush isn't going to connect, but again, doesn't get punished for it. Phantom, because he really wants Ru Kang to run into that range. Not enough for a full combo, so again, no rage just yet. Good tech. Oh, there's the block. Gets a full launch too. 10 seconds and counting, even if this doesn't kill. Oh no, the drop! Nice time. He's got it for the drop, the rage drive for a third time works. Goes in for the mid, and Ru Kang finally defeats the Phantom. You know the relief 
He must be feeling finally getting that. And now he has a shot at Kane and Trench in winners' finals. It was so important for Ru Kang to be able to take that, though, because the Phantom has bested him multiple times in this championship. Multiple times. So it's just happened once. Yeah. At least twice these guys have met in the UK Championship. The Phantom has beaten him time after time. So if he was to lose the Phantom again there, that would be a huge mental block. Imagine if they fought again in top 16 then, you know, in yeah. at, at the finals at MCM. That's going to be a, a, a massive block, but the fact he's able to overcome the Phantom here will kind of open things up a little bit. However, the final. we can't forget, we've seen what Phantom does when he's in losers bracket. Yes. Need to remind everyone about Dublin. Phantom got sent to losers in his pool stage, lost to the truth in that sort of group stage, went all the way through losers, basically destroyed everybody. And in top eight, got his run back against the truth and won that very easily. And then got second place. And then got second place. And not not mention, not forgetting, he took a, ra a set off Fergus. He did reset he Fergus. Reset the bracket. Winning. So he reset uh, the bracket. It's not that Phantom struggles from losers bracket. I'm sure he'll still be okay. But uh, this the Shin Phantom, right? It, of course, Shin Phantom. But this does take us on to the crunch time matches of the top eight. Now, the juicy games. Why are these so important? So we just mentioned this earlier. However. The four players that were on winner's side top eight have already qualified for the UK Championship. And they're in the tournament to get more experience and to challenge the challengers, you know, to make them really prove that they can sit among the top 16. However, four players are in the lower bracket and none of them have qualified. There are three spots left, which means that the next two losers bracket matches we're going to play uh, will basically mean whoever wins those two games will move on and qualify for the London finals in a couple of weeks' time. And then after that, there's going to be a seventh place playoff where one player among the two that will lose now will play a three out of five to determine who the third and final qualification player is going into that top 16 final. But we've got one set to go first, you know, which is our first qualification match. And it's going to be Bonus Gin versus Solid Rose. Both of these guys haven't really seen them too much before. This is Bonus Gin's first. I believe UK qualifier, and he's made top eight, you know. Narrowly lost to the Phantom, actually almost defeated the Phantom in winners. Yeah, he's definitely having a good tournament so far. But these guys are one set away from qualifying for that final. But I believe this is going to be uh, Lily versus Nina. Well, we know Bonus Gin definitely plays Nina. And I'm, I'm sure Solid Rose was Lily. There, well, there's, sure. not been, there's not been even a, a shred of a chance that Bonus Gin has changed from Nina so far. And he looks really comfortable as well. So I don't think we're going to see a character change. Well, we will find out very soon with, well, again, we'll, another two out of three. Our seventh place playoff will be three out of five as well. Uh, aside from that, the only three out of five we're going to have is winners, losers, and grand finals. So standard stuff there. Yeah, yeah. we're still in two out of three territory. Two games is going to be a matter of who makes it. That's a lot of, uh, that is a lot of pressure though, isn't it? When you've got two games to decide whether you go to London or not. It is. I mean, these guys are effectively less than 10 minutes, I should think, away from knowing if they're going to be going or not. Or at least having it confirmed. Bear in mind, we have this seventh place playoff situation. So whoever loses this set will be out not of the tournament. But yeah. we'll still have a chance to get that final qualification spot. This is essentially, when it comes to a qualification point, a winner's bracket match. <laughs> For them, yes. For them, it is. But we're still in a two out of three zone. Whoever wins this is going to be our first qualifier going into the London final. So let's go. Fight. We're on an infinite stage, which is um, actually the thing about watching Bonus Gym play is that he's like, he's got really good neutral in general, but when he gets in, he goes ham with cancels. Like he is very, very aggressive. He does, but one thing we saw before against the Phantom was a lot of wall pressure, but he doesn't. Go he isn't going to have that hit. So. I was about to mention, yeah. I think the wall has greatly benefited Bonus Gym. So I actually think I'm yet to see him without it. Doesn't seem to be phasing him too much though, Solid Rose. Does manage to land a catch, doesn't get the combo, but at this stage it doesn't really matter. Rage is activated, has the extra damage anyway. We're probably gonna see a Rage drive around now. Or Rage R. Health is definitely low enough. You can see Bonus Jin trying not to commit to too much, I think. Doesn't want to just walk into a Rage R. Oh, there's a Rage drive. Using it back to back, the sidestep almost works. But doesn't matter anyway. Low chops can do that. Round number one, Bonus Jin. Oh, straight into Tailspin. That's a really nice amount of damage. Elements of these cancels, Bonus Gin actually using it just in the general up close without needing walls. Oh, wow. Just, I mean, that that was just a, con a convincing round through and through. Bonus Gin just all over him from start to finish. Well, Bonus Gin throughout the entire tournament has looked really comfortable. Like, the, the, the pressure of this being a final qualifier will either make or break some players, but for Bonus Gin, it really hasn't affected him too much. That said, Solid Rose, actually, throughout the whole tournament, has also been very well composed. Oh, nice throw. 
but good tech from Solid Rose. Yeah, just get out of that dangerous situation. Oh, look at the movement from Bonus Jin. But that's what they're trying to jab at him. That really is the cancel sort of stuff he's applying. Just really dancing around the front. Okay, Solid Rose does bring around on the board. Still in it. But remember, guys, two out of three. I mean, we could potentially be one round away from Bonus Jin. Half the work being done already. Maybe but Solid Rose with a nice solid combo. Both players really, I mean, there's, there's a lot of respect. However, when Bonus Jin goes in, he really dedicates. Absolutely, but even then right now, he's kind of not putting himself in too much of a dangerous situation, though. It doesn't seem like it. Oh, tries to punish the launcher, doesn't quite get it. Definitely would have been game over if he got the punish. Oh, wow, gets a big hit. That could be important. And yes, the second one is going to get it. Bonus Jin could be one game away from qualifying for MCM. Goodbye. Straight into rematch. Not really fussed about the stage at all. Some players, sorry, try and take some time out. They try and give it a well, think. Some players do actually really like to go, nah, we're going to go straight in. Because they might be feeling it, they might be really having the muscle memory on deck, and they just go straight into it, which is what we saw here. Oh, wow, big throw. Yeah, it's a good start. Oh, wow, you just walk straight yeah. into that launcher. Just tagging it. Oh, she does drop the combo, though. Does get maximum damage, but just look at this life lead already, wow. Oh, no tech this time. That's going to be round one again for Bonus Jin. He's looking really dominant. I think in this stage, it's going to take quite a lot for Solid Rose to really pull some of that momentum away and take it back for himself. Oh, wow. Yeah, no count hit there. Swift kick to the mid-session. Bit of damage. Not a huge round, but definitely something. Oh. Yeah, trying to catch it again. You know, he's, that's why he's going for those wayward launches. He's trying to catch Solid Rose sticking out a limb that can get launched, but this time out didn't work out. Really paid the price. Another round, that's probably going to be game. Very good round for Solid Rose. That's exactly what he needs to bring this one back in. Just good openings, good whiff punishing, and not falling for too much of these rushdown shenanigans. Well, speaking of rushdown shenanigans, the mist. However, we would see the mist near the wall. There's no wall here, so I wonder if we're ever going to see it. Exactly. Perhaps Again, not. really trying to stick out that launcher. Doesn't matter too much. Catches wow. a raw tail spin. This is going to do good damage as well. One more right, hit might finish, seal it. Yeah, this is one hit territory. Speaking of which, though, Solid Rose has got rage. Ooh. Oh, not quite enough. Was survived by an absolute shred of life, but it's enough. Bonus Jin, one match away. One round to go from qualifying for finals and moving it through top eight losers. This is match by wow. territory. Catches the launcher. This might be the start of it. This next few couple of sequences might decide whether he makes London finals or not. Oh, no tech. Really just doing a nice job of just taking damage where he can get it. Less than half a life bar to go. This could be everything. Bonus Jin could be so close to qualifying. Yes, he is. Bonus Jin moves on through and secures himself a spot in the London Comic Con Top 16 Finals in a few weeks' time. Now, Bonus Jin may be through. Solid Rose. However, this doesn't mean he isn't. He's now going to wait in that seventh place playoff situation, which means it's also a matter of deciding who his opponent is going to be, which of is course. the match that we have coming up next. It is indeed. We have one more losers bracket top eight match to go before we can get our seventh place playoff and find out who will be our final qualifier. But that is up and coming. It's going by quite quickly, isn't it? We said in a matter of about the, 10 these minutes. These are very fast matches. I, I kind of expected them all to be a lot closer so far. I think that's the nature of Tekken 7. Though. Tekken is a fast paced game. Yes. You know, damage is high, rushdown is pretty strong, you could say. Um, but for the most part, it's just a very exciting. Plus, exciting, also, I think it's confidence. Pace. All, all of these players in top eight, they, they play with so much confidence. They, they, they believe in their reach. They know what they can do. Oh, and yeah. They've spent weeks getting to this point. That's why they have the confidence now. You know? They've kind of earned the right to have it because they've spent weeks grinding to now. This is just the final qualifier. It's like the, the big one is in two weeks' time, top 16 finals. That's the important one. But that doesn't mean these guys aren't taking these qualifiers seriously, trying to get as much experience in the game as possible to get better at it so they are better prepared for the finals. Well, so far, this top eight has definitely a mixture of, of objectives, right? So if you've qualified and you're here, you're really trying to get as much data as possible. Because bear in mind, Tekken 7 is not out. The game comes out on June the 2nd, which is in a few weeks' time. However, right now, the only way to prepare for that top 16 London finals is to play Tekken 7. The only way to play Tekken 7 has been to be at these qualification events because it's been tournament and also a mixture of casual. So you can sit down and play this game all day, every single weekend for five weeks. But because the game isn't out, this is the one and only way in the UK that you've had this experience. And as I say that, I'm uh, Amush King, right? Who's got top eight with Claudio, a new character. He's been at multiple events already.
And that is how he's got the experience with Claudio. And he's reaping the rewards right now. Top eight, one game away from potentially making finals already. And if he doesn't win here, he has a chance anyway in the seventh place playoff. Dinosaur goes way back. Very experienced Tekken player. Uses a number of characters, but has been using Jack today. And that's what I assume we'll see from him again now. But the question is, how familiar is Dinosaur with Claudio? Because Amwash King did use Claudio to eliminate uh, Shadow Force for a four top eight in the match, four top eight. But in that matchup, you could see certain levels of unfamiliarity, not really knowing what's punishable. Certain things that were launch punishable were punishable by certain options. Um, they weren't as obvious at first glance, you know? Whereas if you're fighting against Claudio, you really need to know what you can punish, because it's a big deal. You know, some of these mix-ups are no joke, but if you don't know how to punish them, then it becomes even more dangerous. He is going to be sick with that, I think. So Dinosaur is going to have to go after Claudio here, qualify through top eight. But, I mean, Din Dinosaur just looks strong overall. Very, very solid. So just to remind everybody at home, this is our second qualification set. Whoever wins this set is going to move on directly to the London Comic Con Finals in a couple of weeks' time. A lot to play for right now on G Corp Helipad. And another one of, uh, it's an interesting stage actually, because it's really an unorthodox shape when you've got those two walls that can yeah, break. the two walls that can be broken through, kind of extends it off, but as a base, you know, a bit of an unconventional, like I said, an unconventional shape. All right, let's go. We're going to really find out how much matchup on the dinosaur has about cardio. Find out in due time. Oh, wow. Let's confirm that. I don't think he was quite ready for that to launch by itself. Now, that string in particular, I believe, is quite a dangerous string that you need to know how to punish. Oh, yes, a big For that launcher. reason, there's a big launch on it. Goes to the mid option, loses the Starburst, but is safe. Let's not forget Claudio, a very unique character in the sense that he kind of has an, an element of micromanagement beyond uh, some characters that have meter. He has Starburst. Oh well, he has the throw tech. Has access to rage though. So his jack damage could be big. Gets a uh, rising launcher. Actually, accidentally gets a grab. A bit of an execution error. Doesn't seal it and might pay the price. Oh, there's a. That could have been a big punish. That could have been fully launched. But we just talked about lack of matchup knowledge we're seeing, and that's why Amush is going for those strings. That one string in particular, very dangerous, especially if the punish isn't known. There's the hop kick, another dangerous tool. I mean, it, it is punishable, but it somewhat retreats a little bit. Oh, and there's the whiff. Obviously, Dinosaur, a very well known, patient player, very defensive. There again, runs into a hop kick like that. And Wash King, really gonna run away with this one. And there's the second hit again. A big launcher. This is looking like a really comfortable game for Amuj right now. He only has to take one more round, and he's in a very good situation. There we go, finally gets the big punish, but could it be too late to salvage this first match? I mean, knowing that's punishable is just half the battle. There's so much else that Claudio brings to the table that if you're not ready for, very dangerous. Oh wow, hop kick, tail spin. Nice conversion, there goes the Starburst. How is he going to spend it? The mid! That's the mid, big damage incoming. He's going to get Starburst again. Is he going to go for another option? Oh, and there's a hop kick. Uh-oh. Is that going to connect? That's, it looks like press one. Yes, it is. Oh! That almost looked like the unblockable was going to hit him. No, he went for the, uh, I believe it was the low option. Was it? It was low, it was low or the mid. It definitely wasn't the unblockable. Either way, that Rage Art's going to go straight through that one. Wow. But that's the kind of thing that Dinosaur needs. Yeah, he made the read that he was going to go for one of those Starburst options, and he did make the right call. He's got that wall presence. Jack against the wall is very scary. Dinosaur looking wow. so much more comfortable. And a perfect on round four. Final round. And Wash King was looking so dominant early on, but Dinosaur's made some kind of adjustment. Wow, absolutely no. Not coming into my face. Oh, just the patience. This is what we see from Dinosaur, just the blocks. Oh wow, oh, tagging no, out again. Yeah. Probably wasn't quite ready for that jab to get a full launcher. There's a big running punch, has access to Starburst. Oh, now rage both players. This is quite dangerous. Oh, oh wow, oh. just like that, you can tell. Amwash King must have been waiting for the rage driver or something. Just wasn't ready for that. I think it was actually really smart because in that situation, I think it's quite fair to assume that when Claudio's in rage and there's enough health that one more mix up will seal it. Considering the fact that the two mix-ups aren't punishable by a huge degree, it's very obvious that when that rage becomes available, the rage driver is like the first go-to option. I think Dinosaur probably knew that, and that's why he literally just keep him as at arm's reach as physically possible. Versus, does he stick to Claudio? No, looks like he might be going to another character, make sure his buttons are what they should be. 
Bear in mind, in this up-to-date build of Tekken 7, you can actually change your buttons now. Really big deal for these players. So he's gone back to Fang. Can I understand this? I think it's fair that he's, you know, going back to his roots, you could say, for Tekken 7. I really, I think he's used Fang more than he's used Claudio. Well, I would assume so, but we are going into what could be the last match now. Amwash King made the change to Feng, so we'll be locked into this for the rest of the set. Feng's going to be a pretty good pick here, though, because he's a, he's a really fundamentally sound character, but he's got good pokes, he's got good range to them. Um, Jack really is a character which has superb range anyway, so the fact that Feng can somewhat contest with that, even though he hasn't got the same body size, you know, it's going to be quite an interesting exchange in the mid-range. Oh, tries to immediately go in for the rising launcher and doesn't quite get it. Oh no, Looked like a bit of an input error perhaps from Dinosaur. He's going, I think Amucha's going really in there with the stances. Trying to be really tricky in the neutral. Oh wow, just going out of that low charge. Rage activated already. Oh well. I think that's why he went for the uh, the rising kick. He probably was expecting another low oh, charge. Oh, spacing from Dinosaur just to stand out of that sweet spot so he can't get tagged. But it's just patience. It really is just absolute patience. Yeah, punishing that down too. Not letting him get away with anything at the moment. Kind of looks like Mooj isn't really sure how he wants to approach this. He's just wow. getting outraged. There we go. Massively. Now he gets to confirm. Yeah, the damage does scale, but any damage is good damage if it gets off a jab. Wow. Sidestep did get him away. He's going to get a full combo here. Tail spin. Oh, oh no, this is the, the unfortunate. Absolute end of it. Gets the wall nice and early though, big damage here. What's the mix up? Gets the low sweep, no the drop! Doesn't matter, he takes it anyway. Feng doesn't even need to look at him to take the round. Fight. Looks like Amwash King showing some signs of life now. Is he gonna go down without a fight? Well, still very clearly comfortable with Feng, absolutely. Yeah, doesn't want to commit too much to that forward three. Your follow-ups are super unsafe. Oh, wow. headbutting a big robot. Painful. Nice. Take the damage where you can get it. Another low, but nicely punished by Dinosaur. Good patience. Catches the uh, shoulder charge. Okay. So clearly still very comfortable with the Feng pick. Oh, tries to again get a rise launcher. Doesn't get it. Oh, there's a little tag. Oh, tries to get punished. Either didn't work or just a little bit too late. But this is kind of what we said about the fact that Feng has good reach of his own. Like He's not having to be point blank to really contest with what Dinosaur's trying to establish. Oh, rolls into him. Dinosaur keeps pressure going. Nice launcher. Gets it this time. Fourth time's a charm, I think. Oh, the big oh, sweep. Oh, oh, wow. He's going to get the wall. He's going to extend this. No, doesn't quite get the extension. Oh, and no. a punish for his troubles. Pop against the wall as well. Awkward rise. No, it oh. goes through. Is that going to kill? Oh, hang enough? on. That's going to be game. He's going to take the game on this. And Mooj King fighting back. The damage was already traded by the time he used it. We all knew because that single hit, it was going to work. One game each. Super close. Dinosaur goes straight in for the rematch. Absolutely down to the wire. This could be it. I mean, it's clear these guys really want to qualify. This, this is the last stage they can do so comfortably. I do hear some love for Dinosaur in this crowd, though. It's been around for a while, played once or twice. Oh wow, challenging that sweep. Taking the guaranteed damage. Oh, new moves. But just look at that, just maintaining that lead, shipping him down piece by piece. Round one for Dinosaur. Round two. Giving himself a little bit of breathing room. Wow. Oh. And again, catches the rising launcher again. Really, really fast option, but unfortunately drops his combo. I'm not sure if he tried to do 4-3-4 there or something. Gonna catch the tail spin. Good damage. Has the wall again. Now this is the positioning that he wants. If he can keep Dinosaur here, it's fantastic. But if not, maybe in trouble. Oh, there's the grab. Now this has put Armwash King in a really good situation. Gets the block on the low. Nice awareness on that string. The punish accordingly catches the launcher. Bear in mind, Dinosaur has access to rage. Oh. Oh wow. wow. Just completely ducking under whatever happened and headbutting him in the face. Very close right here. Once again, taking that damage. Gets to the launcher on the forward, fourth, sorry, fourth, three, four, full combo. Nice wall oh carry as well. Huge damage coming out as well. Has the wall as well, gets the splat. Just lets him stand up. Wants the Yoki. Oh, the tech on the tech. grab. This might be everything. Oh. 
Dinosaur Harris still, is still alive, absolutely by the skin of his teeth. Somehow he survives. Oh, and he can't do the launcher running right into it. Dinosaur only needs one round. Another great, just absolutely survived by a sliver. This crowd going pretty crazy right now. They want Dinosaur to take this. This is match point, one round away from qualifying. But Amash King looking really strong as well. I mean, he's really trying to stagger that forward three. Does not want to overcommit at this point. Oh no. That's a good trade. Really good from Machine Goes in blockable. Ooh. No, misspaced. A little bit of wind up on that one. Oh, with this. Uh oh. That could be disastrous. A little bit too eager to close things out. He may pay for this one. This is Dinosaur pressure. thrives, has him to the wall. There's the whiff, there's the grab. Even better tech from Dinosaur. There we go, Armwash King with the denial on the shoulder. Back one, two for days. It's going to be match point for both players. Whoever wins this makes it into the London Finals. One round's going to decide it. On oh, there's the block. Dinosaur chipping away this life if he can. Life relatively even right now. Good tech. Dinosaur is letting that going to work. And forward three mid is such a good tool for Feng. The patience from Dinosaur. There's a good launcher once again, but Armwash King has been in the situation too many times. That famous, definitely bring it back. Famous patience of Dinosaur coming through, just letting him hang himself. Oh, the launcher is even better. Armwash King backs it again. He's going to get the wall here. Refusing to get conditioned. The low oh, sweep. Lord. Drops the combo though. Dinosaur has read. It may not matter. He catches the rising launcher. And there we go. Amush King makes it into the finals and takes it over Dinosaur. But we're not finished, Mustard. We are not even close to finish. Armwash King has confirmed himself a spot in the finals, but this now means, even though Dinosaur is out of the tournament, a seventh place playoff now must start to find who will be our final qualifier for the day. This will be best of five. Dinosaur coming up against Solid Rose. I mean, okay, so Dinosaur just played, right? And although it was a heart it, somewhat of a heartbreaking loss for him because it was so close, he was taking rounds, he was doing well, his execution was on point. He's actually going to be ripe and ready to go here, right? He's like, ready, warmed he's, up. He's, he's warmed up, like he's good to go. So, I feel like he's going to be probably going into this playoff with a bit more momentum. However, Rose Hats. has had time to sit and collect and think about what he may have done wrong in some of those sets. Again. So he's going to be going into it a bit, a bit more, I guess, mentally prepared. Well, again with those ups and downs, like I said before, the double-edged sword, as it were, of uh, having time to watch, to calm down, or to go straight in. Because let's say, you know, for example, you know, for, for debate's sake, let's say Dinosaur's tilted after that. Let's say he's be. not very happy with the result of that. Now you've got to go straight into your next match feeling like that. There's no time in between. I feel like there is no better opportunity to say, you guys are home, get involved in this discussion. We've just had a crazy set. Tell us how you think. Tell us what you think of this tournament so far. Who do you want to make the top, the finals in this set that we're about to play so far? Make sure you're tweeting at us with the hashtag T7. UK Championship. Make sure you're following Tekken on Twitter, Bandai Namco Europe on Twitch, and Tekken EU on Facebook. Plenty of information on upcoming finals and also European Tekken events all around. They're going to be taking place in preparation for the game's release. Oh, absolutely. But back to the matter at hand. Oh, I'm players. so excited for this. We have our players getting ready to go. This is it. Five weeks of qualifiers. One spot left to go. And only two people are left able to claim it. This will be the point of the, the final, I hate to say it, the final loser. The, fi the, the last final loser. loser. Or the last winner, depending on how bleak you look at it, Mustard. It depends, but that is the situation we're in. There are five weeks of qualifying, hundreds of players across all of the United Kingdom. Absolutely. It to actually was hundreds as well. Plenty of players all over the UK coming out in full yeah, force. Ireland, Glasgow, Birmingham, Manchester, and now London. One spot left, two players left to claim it. Dinosaur or Solid Rose in the best of five. We're about to find out who will be the one to claim it. Brian. Brian. We did hear tales of Brian earlier on. Brian, definitely a fantastic character in this game, but a character we've seen barely none of in the UK Championship. I just wonder if it's just luck of the draw, right? Because everyone knows that Brian is a really good character. For us to have not seen him much in the UK means that it just must not be a very popular character over here. Perhaps, but with that in mind, how ready can you be for him? Indeed. I mean, how much have you fought against Tekken 7, Brian? So, this is our final set. Three out of five. We are now in a three out of five territory to decide our final qualifier. I would not want to feel what these two players are feeling right now. No, absolutely. Okay, Lily versus Brian on the Forgotten Realm. Big damage output on a stage like this if you can break that floor and get the wall in one combo. 
really going for that back and forth. Neither player trying to overcommit too much early on. Brian, damage for days. Absolutely a high damage output character. Speaking of which, though, Dinosaur is down on life right now. Solid Rose with a solid lead. Looking good. Well, we really haven't seen Dinosaur pick much of Brian in Tekken 7. So, truly, how much experience does he have with this this iteration of, of Brian? You know, is this going to be a Brian all the way, or do you reckon we'll see a character change if things go wrong? Catch the launcher. Not sure, but you don't want to put yourself down a game if you can help it. Wow, There's downstairs. The ground. Gonna get the wall as well. Big damage wow. on that. 50% down, just like that. Solid Rose looking so good right now. Big wow. sweep takedown, that's probably going to be the round. Yep, downstairs to guarantee it. I mean, this is the strength of this stage, right? It can extend damage to that magical amount that you just need to take the round. Yeah, but practically perfect as well. Solid Rose looking really good so far. Now, Dinosaur so far really hasn't had much of a chance to enforce anything. As I say that, though, a little bit aggressive right here. Oh, really checking in with those lows. Again, taking a bit more damage. I think he's really trying to enforce that, that running kick right there. And it seems to be attempting to... Oh, there's a little step again. He's got rage. You've got to be so careful. Oh, oh, only just manages to steal that away. Dinosaur keeps him up in game one. I'm actually really surprised that that kick beat it. Again, both players being really careful at the moment. So far, we've seen Solid Rose. He's actually sort of sat wow. and held every mix-up after that. I'd say Dinosaur is just kind of trying to fake him out at the moment. He's kind of going for that almost like poking him down, chip style. Oh, big launch. That's probably going to be another round. Not quite. Hang on, he's still alive. The rage is activated. Doesn't matter. One round each now. Take this first game, and it is just the first game. Well, Brian, we saw Dinosaur is able to keep himself in. He was convincingly down two rounds. He's managing to maybe even take this first game. It's going to be a great starting point, I think, for sure. Oh, massive launch, though. That's going to be huge damage. Downstairs once again. Here we go. And now on the ground, no more floors to go through. Oh, Ouch. my God. That was ruthless. Tail spin two. Oh, it doesn't quite get the combo. Ooh. The wake up kick and another drop. Both players a little bit shaky at the moment. Oh, that's going to be it. Game one goes to Dinosaur just like that. Steals it back after what seemingly was going to be a convincing game one against him. Manages to bring it back himself. Not surprised for the, to see the rematch. Really not surprised to see the rematch. Oh, that was super close. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely wasn't a character thing. So just like that, one game down already. Potentially a few more to go. It really is. I mean, you can imagine the pressure in this situation as well, knowing you're so close, but at the same time, at, this is the final hurdle, right? This is the last chance. For these players, well, it definitely is. I mean, no, we have a tournament to run after this, but for these two guys, and for the sake of the UK Championship Top 16, this really is the final set. I wonder, is it going to be Brian or Lily that makes it into London? Either of which, we really haven't seen either of these two characters really repped a huge amount in that top 16. So either way, a nice amount of variety. Oh, through the ground. Could that be enough to finish? Oh, a no, drop. he misses it. Uh-oh, uh -oh, you've, oh, you've just left Brian alive with rage. Oh, there's the block. And there's a trade. That's a really good trade for Solid Rose. Round two. Maybe seeing shades of game one coming back again here. Solid Rose starting off. Oh, no, the big boot. All the cancel stuff, trying to be a bit tricky. Throw tech. Oh, nice launcher. Gonna go through the ground. Oh, tries to. Yeah, it doesn't get the wall, so. Well, it doesn't actually get the wall, it doesn't get the follow up. Speaking oh, of wow. follow up, what a ruthless sequence from Dinosaur. Just like that, turning the tide big time. Damage just coming out of nowhere. Dinosaur ties it up around a piece. That's, I mean, that's the strength of when Brian gets you in that wall, you know. He just knees you to death, and then your health's gone. That's it, game over. Oh, there's the whiff, but no punish from Solid Rose. 
Oh, he's just catch him out of the air conversion. Slow Rose himself is really not sticking out too many buttons. He's being really cautious. Well, there's just a lot of patience from both players. You know, Dinosaur historically known for being patient, but Solid Rose as well. Been very careful. That was a really strange exchange. Hitboxes. Ball stands him again. And another big launcher. It really brave. comes down to the conditioning of that the stomp or the launch. But it was very brave, actually, because I mean, at that point, the stomp was going to seal it. But I think he just expected him to block low, and that's exactly why he threw that out there. But Brian with rage, that was a big game over if he landed the punish. Really trying to harass at range, trying to take that damage, chip out bit by bit. There's a big plus frame. Counter hit. Solo fra uh, solid, solid frames. Solid Rose disrespects the frames and the plus. Ooh, lost the wall as well. Doing it all over the place. Oh, but again, another win. Oh, as soon as Dinosaur goes in to try and punish it, Solid Rose finishes the string and smacks him for it. There's the throw. Is that going to be enough? Not quite. Oh, Dinosaur oh, needs his one enough? launch. And as I say that, he gets it. Oh, we're going to see a rage. Use it as a rage drive. Extended now. Oh, he drops. Drop. Oh, the drop from Dinosaur. No, he cannot be happy with that. But he, it was really smart that he used the rage drive to extend it to get more juggle and then just dropping the final single hit is all he needed. He can't think about that though. He has to just pay attention to the next few games. Oh, my word, just like that though. I mean, that one, that one drop, he could be 2-0 up right now. Heartbreaker. It really comes down to having to forget about that. But Straight into rematch. Props to Solid Rose to recognize the mistake and capitalize on it immediately. Yeah, some players just won't be ready for a mistake like that and they'll just let it slip. I think we're starting to understand the name now. Absolutely. Dinosaur. Oh, wow. Just raw launcher out of it. Ball combo from Sawyer Rose. They go downstairs once again. They get the ball here too. Nice chunk of damage. You can tell why neither player really have gone for a stage change because they both benefit quite greatly from what Forgotten Round brings. Such a massive wow. hit. Rounds over again. Just stomping on his face for good measure. That was another round one where we went down two floors. Only one more break to go. Oh. I feel like Rose, just that his decision making in that sort of neutral state has been so on point. Oh no, with the end. Oh, oh. big Nido gets in, turns it into a launcher. Tailspin. Oh, ends right in his face. Goes down to the bottom floor. Oh, oh no, unfortunate miss. We are at the basement now, so no more floor breaks. Oh, that might be it. Tailspin. I'm, I'm definitely winning. Think that's going to be the round. Oh no, drops Not the ender again. Oh no, he might live to regret it. The rage oh, drive comes through. The grab! He doesn't press buttons and gets grabbed outright. One round from taking another game for Solid Rose. Another round gone down to Dinosaur's execution, unfortunately, letting him down at the moment. The problem Just is that he's drop. getting everything but the last final hit, and that's the one that's costing him the round. The one that you really don't want to miss. Whereas at the same time, Solid Rose's execution has been really impressive throughout this entire set. Again, just really taking this damage when he can get it and being very quick. Oh, oh wow. I like how Solid Rose is only trying to challenge with jabs now. Doesn't want to stick out too much unsafe stuff. Oh, wow. Speaking of which, a nice check there. And one more game. One more game potentially for our final qualifier being decided. Now, does he, yeah, does he go very much? Like, do, we, do we stage select? Does he try and take those floor smashes away? Or does he... Content with it. Well, sometimes we see players, um, they'll go back to character change just because they want the time to think. But I think Dinosaur is really trying to feel this right now. Yeah. Well, he's, he's, he's not playing bad. Well, he's, play, he's playing well. That really is the, the, the one consistent error is those execution things. And that's, that's the first thing that any player will know how to fix, right? It's just, okay, right, tighten well, it up. One. It's a very Fine. easy solution. Doing it under tournament pressure like this, though, maybe not so easy. I don't know. Easy is definitely not the word. Again, Solid Rose, once again, just sort of dancing in that mid-range, trying not to overextend too much. Oh wow, nice sidestep. Dinosaur's getting a lot of mileage out of those jabs, recovering so quickly. Oh, nice good tech. tech. Grab, yeah. Good tech on the grab there. There's the oh, rising launcher. wonderful crouch. Tries to just take damage near the wall. Big counter hit. That's absolutely going to be the first round. Dinosaur putting around on the board. Can see well, stuff coming out though. Dinosaur gets around. Solid Rose still only needs this match to qualify. 
This really is the situation that Dinosaur finds himself in, though. He's got to technically do double the work, but that said, he may be working harder now. We're seeing a lot more sidesteps from Dinosaur now. Maybe he's kind of just recognized that we're seeing Solid Rose go for a lot of those raw launches by themselves. Bear in mind, a 3 out of 5 is plenty of time to adapt. Absolutely, Solid Rose does have access to Rage, though. With the amount of damage we're seeing him put out, I would be very intimidated in the situation Ooh. with the launcher. But that's why the sidestep, I think, is starting to be a really good answer, because these buttons that Solid Rose would stick out now are just completely whipping. However, on Rage, can't get hit once, otherwise it's going to be another round. Oh, the Power Crush! Oh, get the full combo off that! And that's that, it. That's, that's going to be it. Absolutely going to be it. Yes, that is definitely going to add enough. And that's not off a Power Crush. Being able to combo off a Power Crush is such an amazing tool for some of these characters. For reasons just like that, like an armored option that ends around, it's crazy good. Especially if you've got the Rage behind you. And there's the whiff. A little bit late on the punish. Again, Solid Rose has been playing so well at the moment. He's recognizing when he can and can't get damage. A lot of knowledge of Tekken 7 as well, knowing when to use the Power Crush, when to use Rage. Oh, wow, the tracking. Oh, oh what wow, a challenge! Again. That's going to do big damage once again. Probably not going to kill on this. Does drop the combo, leaving him with a bit more damage on the board. Brian with Rage is so dangerous. the low, just to challenge it. Oh, there's the whiff. Is that going to be it? No, not quite enough. That's going to work for Brian. Yes, definitely. Di <laughs> I was about to say Dian. Dinosaur with Brian <laughs> taking a second round. One round away from tying this up. Two games apiece. Solid Rose still definitely has the benefit here. We've actually seen Dinosaur go to that um, that sort of jumping kick a lot less as the set's gone on, but when he was getting it blocked, he was really enforcing some good pressure that Solid Rose was taking. He wasn't really challenging it by much. All the stomps just to keep him blocking low. Another stomp and another stomp. Match point for Solid Rose. No, this could be one more round. You know the second dinosaur crouches to block those, he's going to get tagged with that launcher again. That fat launcher. Match point for Solid Rose, though. This could be everything for him. This could be one round to decide who our final London qualifier is. Then again, Dinosaur is fighting back. Oh, throw tech again. Dinosaur isn't phased. Very important throw tech right there. Oh, the oh, rising! Wow. This is the start! May not kill on this, but the sequence afterwards might do it! Ooh. So careful, that's not quite enough. Or oh, the block! Oh, oh, the clutch low kick! That's gonna do it! Very, very comfortably by the end of that. But Dinosaur playing so well, but unfortunately, um, <laughs> just crazy good stuff there. Came down Solid to Rose. the last moment. It did. Solid Rose manages to confirm himself as the final qualifier. Five weeks of effort, and here we are. We have our top 16 decided. Wow, just like that. But the tournament's not even over yet. That's, 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 that's what happens every week. Finished. That's what happens every single week, where our qualifiers are now decided, but we've still got a tournament to run. And our tournament that we're going to run up next is Asin, Asim versus Bonus Jin. So that's another lo loser's bracket match. We're going to be going back to the two out of three. Uh, and then we're going to resume three out of five in winners' finals, losers' finals, and grand finals. But in our losers' bracket, we have Asim versus Bonus Jin. And then up after that is the Phantom versus Amuj King. So at this point, because our qualifiers are already determined, this is going to be who's going to go into the London finals, riding the most momentum, being the latest champion. Well, that's what we want to find. <laughs> Ultimately, because to be honest, the fact that in the winners' side, we've got Kane and Trench and Ru Kang sitting in winners' finals, which I don't think is a match we've seen yet uh, in the championship. I, I don't believe I think we're actually yet to see these guys play in the UK championship. I'm actually really excited to see this set. But the question is, you know, is, is Kane and Trench going to win every qualifier he enters? Or will Ru Kang cause the upset here? Will he be able to knock him down into losers? Because really, in, in my mind, that truly is the running story of this now, is can Kane and Trench be stopped? Well, we're one tournament away from finding out beforehand. If Kane and Trench goes into this entire series winning everything, that's going to be a message as well. But, you know, we have to find out. Well, that's what we're here to find. Asim bringing that Steve that he's been running all day, looking super convincing, looking very strong, very consistent. But Bonus Jin bringing out Nina. Bonus Jin, I think, has done a really good job in this tournament because this is his first entry into the UK Championship. So I think the fact that he's come in now, without having, I guess, the prior experience that the rest of his competition has had, the fact that he's been able to qualify as his first event is actually really important. Ask him, though.
The cool thing about watching Aston play is that he's gone through character to character, um, in Manchester particularly. Whereas today, it's pretty much, it has been all Steve. But he's been looking so good with Steve. Well, that's the impressive thing, is that apparently, according to Bubsy, he hadn't actually used um, Steve since Tekken 5, which is obviously quite a while ago now. <laughs> a long time ago now. But once you've got comfortable with a character, you know, for, for as long as you have actually played them, Ooh, hang on. On the topic, could we be, could we see Eddie? Oh, looks have like we it. got Eddie? Because Bubsy was talking about this. Eddie in Tekken 7 is quite an interesting case. He has received some definite changes. Um, he's not. I guess he's definitely not the incredible, 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 incredible powerhouse that he was in Tekken Tag 2. I tried to mix. And my brain frazzled. However, in Tekken 7, there's a lot of discussion over whether people think Eddie's like really good or not. But I think a big part of it is the fact that he's only accessible right now on console, which means the experience to Eddie has been quite limited. Well, I mean, to be fair, even though he is different in Tekken 7, if you are comfortable enough with him, surely you can kind of just pick up and, and do some basics. Fundamental things, and I guess that's what we're going to be looking for in Asim right now. Well, Eddie is still Eddie. The adjustment has been to his ability to combo off certain things, and very importantly, his damage. His damage really isn't what it once was. And in a game like Tekken, where damage is so high for a lot of characters, not really competing with that same level of damage is a bit of a detriment. But I guess it comes down to how frequently can you get that damage, and also, we have to factor in how optimized are people's Eddie combos yet. They haven't really had time to optimize Eddie just yet. Oh, there's the throw tech. Oh wow, the bonus gin stops it. Oh, does it get the full combo though, unfortunately? Both players are on rage. This is when things get really dangerous. Oh no! The takedown just to go straight through the rage drive. Oh, is that gonna work? Oh! Wow. Oh, they traded! If that was a, less, a less amount of health, we'd have had a double KO off the slowdown. Asim looking pretty strong right now with Eddie though. If he looks a bit comfortable. Oh. Oh! Whiffs the mist. Catches the grab. A nice start, start to damage. Deceivingly high damaging grab in some cases. Really checking in with those lows again. And the punish. Oh no, not quite. Oh, there's a whiff. It doesn't get punished. Oh, speak which bonus gym with a big launcher now. Yeah, it kind of looked like launchers almost collided there, but Nina's definitely coming out first. Oh! Spar kick of his own. Trying to be tricky. Run into grab. Nice tech. Answering back with rage as well. Oh, again, the punish on the low this time round. Does manage to get it. It's one round each. Round three. Fight. Oh, now that one tool in particular actually does launch and it catches buttons from away, but kind of like where you would see a Raven, uh, Master Raven, go for that retreating launcher. Kind of serves a similar purpose with Eddie there. Nice punish on that bonus gin. Does scale quite heavily though. It's not a massive amount of damage, but definitely something. Oh, running tackle into the leg breaker. Nice tech. Oh, nothing connects apparently. Looking for a launch here. Well, I think there's a lot of patience here from Asim. He's really looking for his time to just land something significant. But right now, as each hit connects, he just has less and less damage to make it work. Oh, wow. Tries to press buttons after that, but bonus gins is going to work. Round two four. rounds to one at the moment. Stage we are back change. to two out of three now as well, so less games to work with than we've just seen. Goes in for the relax, catches the leap off that. Now, this is exactly where Asim wants his opponent to be. He's going to catch the grab. A little bit of damage is going to do it. The whiff does actually come through right there. Very, nice very good blow. round. That was very... Convincing from Asim. He kind of needed that, I think. That's kind of like the classic Eddie, right? Where you see sticking out so many limbs, you're really not sure when to try and whip punish. At the same time, Bonus Jin's managing a good job of it, though, so far. Well, he looks very comfortable in the matchup. No, definitely. Big life lead as well at the moment. He's 50%. There's life gone. Oh, run into grab. Good start. I mean, to be really careful though, because bear in mind, Nina's damage output is really good, especially near the walls. If he gets hit by anything launching based here, maybe game over. Perhaps, but it depends on the angle. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Nice. Run into grab, gets it once again. Oh, big whiff.
Nice launch, but gets splat against the wall, so can't get maximum damage. Now that's actually a full combo. Might actually get it, but no, I don't think it's quite enough to end. Oh, Ooh. and that will be. Bonus Jin steals that one away. Three rounds to two in game one. That was just game number one. So we're going to carry the same again. We saw this last week. Um, I feel like when we see Eddie get picked, um, I don't feel like there's uh, as much of a level of comfort with Eddie so far as other characters with the players that have picked him so far. Because he, he's quite different, you know, um, to what he was before. And I think some of the changes, because they've affected certain areas like his damage, which is a very key area, it's no surprise that we're seeing players kind of, they'll give him a go, but I don't think people are fully going to dedicate to Eddie just yet. Now, we Dragunov. haven't seen Asim's Dragunov uh, since, I believe, Manchester. And he was looking very good. <laughs> He's just looking very powerful with this character already. I mean, Asim's been around for a while. No doubt he plays a ton of characters, but his Dragunov particularly in Manchester was looking very powerful. I think Dragunov in general is a very tidy character in this game. He's always been, you know, he's always been... Um, a solid character, but in Tekken 7 in particular, he really has just got a lot of good tools that, that fit the way the game is played. He's got really good buttons, he's got Round good damage, one. he's got good pressure. Fight. And Asim has clearly looks very comfortable with this character as well. The one thing you wonder is, because it's one of many characters, do you wonder if Asim may be potentially a bit too rusty because he hasn't used Dragunov today? I'm not sure, it depends how... Wow, an up I just want to say, we just saw an up kick challenge off the running too. Challenging the plus frame with a rising up kick. You don't really see that every day. No, but has the splat. There's no I don't think that's going to absorb. No, definitely not. The thing about Rage Art, even though they have a hit of armor, you do take the damage. So if you can't afford to take the health damage from the hit itself, you're still going to go down to it. If you haven't got the health, the armor doesn't exist. He's really trying to challenge Asim. Coming back. Oh, wow. This rush down. This is what he needs. Oh, the parry. Oh, wow. Nice. I like how Bodishin didn't really let him get aggressive for too long without immediately parrying. We haven't really seen that parry much at all either. I think he's really had the opportunity to use it. Seems like bonuskin has been on the driver's seat. Oh wow, this. what an this answer for nice that running too. Yeah, is that gonna do enough? No, not quite. Oh, beautiful stuff. Bonus Jin looking really good. Match point. Yeah, clean. Clean match point already. Another launch. This is a great way to start things. Bonus Jin has looked so comfortable this entire series. No, definitely first about the wall. Oh, and again, here comes the pressure, the mix-ups for days. Oh, oh nice roll. Punch. Yeah, normally that's such a strong Oki tool. Immediately, with the, almost like a wake-up rage dot does actually work. Now, he's definitely not going to kill on this, but the setup afterwards is going to put him in a great situation. But bonus Jin, he's going to have to make the read here. That's big damage. Gets a bit of Oki, a little bit more. Oh, There's plus, plus frames. frames. Throws from it as well. Beautiful decision. I feel like it was like a, a double jeopardy thing where bonus Jin, because he did such a bold decision of the hop kick last time he blocked that, this time around Asim was like, you are not going to do something that bold again. I guarantee it. Nice launcher. Ends right in his face, goes to the stomp, but the roll's going to avoid it. Oh, oh wake up, takes him down. down. Big snake watching in the background. Oh, wow, the wall damage. And still has the pressure, wakes up with it. Over the tech. Oh, wake up, get up kick. That's going to be a full combo. He's got rage up. One more hit might do it. So get still match point. Wow, that's going to be enough. Now, Asim steals that one back from nowhere. Just like that, with Asim being on the back foot as much as he is, now all he has to do is win one round, and he's tied things up completely back to neutral. There's the launch from Bonus Jin. Oh, there's the whiff. Launch of his own. Back to him, though. Gravity could be a little bit yeah, awkward. Yeah, really dodgy gravity, unfortunately. Wasn't able to get a full combo off that one. Run it two, plus frames. Wow, challenge wow. again, but the retreating version, quite smart. This is still match point for bonus Jin, even though Asim's having a really good run, this is still good for him. Oh, more plus frames. Oh no, the sidestep, what an answer! That's gonna be it. Bonus Jin taking it over Asim. So not only is he qualified, but he's had what it t has taken to defeat other players that have qualified already. Well, that's the important thing for these guys, though. We are seeing them again at Comic Con, but these. Everyone in this tournament is now fighting potential opponents for top 16. They need to show themselves now that, okay, right, I'm going into this tournament that you will be at having not lost to you. And I think yeah. it's important that they can say that to themselves. Well, because these players, everyone in this tournament is qualified. So everyone that's going to beat everyone from this point on is going to go into top 16 knowing that that happened. You know? So ultimately, if you can do as much as you can to prevent that, then uh, that's all going to be for the better. So while we get more of our matches up and running, I actually want to quickly mention uh, the lovely guys and girls over at AOC are actually going to be providing an AOC monitor for whoever wins this tournament today. 
And AOC Monitor actually went to the winner of, well, Kane and Trench last week. Kane and Trench, if he wins two monitors, that's a great setup already. That's cool. But, but obviously, shout out to AOC for sponsoring this event. And uh, a winner for today will be getting one of their monitors, which is all good. If Kane and Trench gets two monitors, that's just greedy, isn't it? Hey, I see. Yeah, and the right. You he did, the right but it's, it's still greedy. Yeah, if he, he's going to go streaming when the game comes out. He should stream or Blame do YouTube. Blame is Yoshimitsu for that and one. And he's got two hot monitors to get started with. No lag as well. It's a big deal. It's a, it's a good way to start. But moving on to some more losers bracket action, we have the Phantom coming up against uh, Amwaj King. Now, who's been playing a couple characters today. So Claudio and Feng. Don't really know who he's going to be sticking with now. I assume Claudio. Because obviously the more time you can get with this new character, the better, most likely. But we'll, well have to wait and see. Amwaj King had such an amazing game against Dinosaur. And he looked so comfortable. But you could see that how happy he was that not only when he made top eight. Because remember, Amwaj King actually defeated uh, Shadow Force to get top eight. Um, and that was with, that, however, that was with Claudio. Now, when he fought against Dinosaur, he was forced to change from Claudio to Feng. And it was with Feng, going back to his traditional, that he actually achieved his greatest success, which was qualifying for the UK Championship, which is why he's sitting here right now, about to face off against the Phantom. Now, on the topic of the Phantom, this guy, I mean, it's going to be Raven. I actually spoke to him earlier about what kind of characters does he feel like, does he feel like he's, he's always going to be just Raven in Tekken 7? or the other characters he was maybe interested in. And he actually mentioned to me that he actually really wished uh, that Wang was in the game. Ah. Because if Wang was in the game, he would use Wang a lot more, you know? Um, but obviously, as is the way, sometimes I guess characters don't make a return. Um, and currently, you know, Wang is not in the game. So he's pretty much stuck to just Master Raven. But well, that's not working a bad thing. out for him so far. So it could definitely be worse. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Remember, this is still loser's bracket action, and as this is not yet loser's finals, we are still in two out of three. Really so back to the short and sweet sets. So although it may seem really strange, for me, it feels kind of strange to see the Phantom in the loser's bracket outside of loser's finals. Um, it's very, because he's had, he's had such a high level of success outside of that. Seeing him in losers this early, quote unquote, even though it's top eight, um, we can't forget what he did in Dublin, which was go on a complete loser's bracket rampage. Defeat from everybody. From pools as well. He was from pools, yeah. pools and from still pools. made it through to second place reset bracket on Fergus. Exactly. Reset the bracket on Fergus was a big deal. Although Fergus did not really take that tournament. The, the sheer level of just dominance that Phantom had while having the pressure and stress of a lower bracket. I mean, this guy doesn't get phased by that. Clearly doesn't get phased. But however, we are now in two out of three territory once again. All right, so going into more losers bracket action, two out of three. And Watch King already trying to start off with the launcher, didn't quite get it, but does get the counter hit, splits, punch. I'm Watch King, he goes for that rising launcher more than I've seen any Feng ever do that. Oh, the unblockable, the parry. Now we saw that last week. The Phantom doesn't allow unblockables to him. He just parries that stuff. Definitely ready for it though. Oh, but another hop kick. Yeah, the up forward force gonna do that one nicely. Looking really good. Very, very comfortable start of the round. But then again, I mean, like, we've seen that loads of times when the Phantom, he's been on the back foot. However, that doesn't really seem to bother him too much. It seems doesn't, like he just sort of comes back anyway. But are we going to see it again? Oh, goes in for the whiff punish. A little bit too slow. But to be fair, he did have to cover some distance before attempting it, so it makes sense. Goes in for the big leg takedown. Oh, so launch. Typical Raven shenanigans. Oh, Taking big damage. Hit. Yeah, that's probably going to be the round at this point. Yeah, good read in the Oki. He's going to take that one nice, nice and comfortably. One round each. Neither, neither of these guys looking too phased, I think, with just how it's going on. Kind of taking it sl steadily, slowly. Fang doing what he always does, which is really checking with those lows. At the same time, though, Phantom gets a nice big hit. Full good combo damage. as well. Doesn't quite get them all, but again, the positioning towards support with the uh, rising kick as well. Oh wow, full wall combo from the Phantom. Doesn't get quite the very end, but just look at the life difference. Speaks volumes. Good block on the low. Phantom ready for that one. I think he'd seen it a couple of times for that top eight. He's kind of really caught on that. Um, that's an option Amwash King really goes for. Wow, big knee. He's ready to hit confirm that second hit every time. It's really good reactions. This is looking all phantom right now. Can't capitalize on the trade, but so much health has gone wow. down. Again, phantom taking that one very dominantly. And we're still in two out of three territory. He only has to take one game now. Do we see the switch to Claudio now? No, nah, he's going to rematch. No, rematch. He hesitated, but 
confident in his Feng, for sure. And let's not forget, this is the Feng that he managed to defeat Dinosaur with. I hope Had he not swapped and stuck with Claudia, he may not be sitting here in the tournament now. Yeah, if it had stuck with Claudia, it might have been Dinosaur sitting here right now. So clearly the Feng was a good pick. The question is, is it a good pick compared to Claudio right now in this matchup? We'll find oh, out. He's stuck to Feng, so we'll never know. Big damage against that wall. Really trying to check right here. Nice punish once again. Sometimes when characters go into different stances, it can really overwhelm a player, but Phantom just staying composed. It's really not bothering him at all. Another big, big launch. launch. Yeah, one round for Phantom. Round Phantom is just so good at placing those. Fight. Again, Amwaj really trying to make the most of these stances. Very, very slow paced round, I will say. It's just been certain blows going back and forth. I think Armage King is just oh. to stick out too many moves because stuff like that will happen. It's power pressure straight through. Here I mean, comes he Phantom. had quite a good life lead, but unfortunately, oh no, like, yeah, he actually managed just to keep it himself. He lost it for just a split three. second, but was able to quickly return. I like how he's actually still being quite confident. Now that was a fantastic low parry on the down two. Really nice awareness from Phantom. As well as face, speaking of lows, I'm, I'm happy to see that Amwaj is actually still dedicating to these low options because they do work out. It's just sometimes not, but it's not deterring him. He's still making that read. Full combo. Yeah, a little bit too far away. I think he wanted Oki instead. Oh, big launch. Brave stuff. Oh, and there we go. Gets the sweep that time. Yeah, speaking of not being afraid to dedicate to the low sweep, does it again, and this time it works out once again. He only has to win one round. He's going to tie things up. Oh, there's the block. I guess Rising launcher two. Yeah, I guess one too many times going for that low. Oh, wow. It's a reset. Bit more damage. Big grab two. Massive life lead. This is what Phantom does best. I mean, he's sort of like, the second you believe it's your turn to take rounds, he answers back with a perfect match point for Phantom. You know he wants that run back against both Wu Kang and Kana Trench. I can't blame him, but Armwash King is letting it happen easily. Oh, oh no, whiff. whiff's the launcher, though. Yeah, whiffing a bit too far away, I think. Another whiff. We did see that against Dinosaur, actually. He's sort of sticking out a little bit too many buttons from just too close. Oh, wow. One more hit's going to do it. Oh, the unblockable to finish things off in style and true Phantom fashion. Saves that until the very end. I mean, to be fair, that's when we tend to see that kind of stuff saved, right? Don't use it too early. <laughs> oh, we, we see end. unblockables. We definitely see unblockables saved until the end all the time. It's just a matter of, you know, because they're so slow on startup. If the pressure's on and the opponent is really worried Wait about... until they least expect it. Well, that's basically what it comes <laughs> down to. It's like when the pressure's on and they're thinking of all these a million and one options that they can do, the unblockable might, in that case, be the last thing they're thinking of. And oh, then it works, yeah. so clearly it was. Yeah, absolutely. So that's another one of our lower bracket matches done and dusted. I think we're moving on to our um, winner's bracket soon. No, surely, surely that should be... Now it's going to be the Phantom versus Asim. To determine who's going to make it and into then, losers' finals. Yeah, to find out who's going to be waiting in losers' finals, then winners' losers' grand. Or it could be winners' finals first, and then we go back down to losers. We'll find out. Another soon. quite an old school matchup, Asim versus Phantom once again. Both these guys go back. Um, and, well, most of these guys do. The ones that have played and placed really high. Oh, in it's this a tournament. Fan, bonus shin. Of course, it's bonus shin. Oh, yeah. Bonus of shin, uh, be Asim. He did, he did, he did, he did. That's that my was, uh, bad. I take responsibility. That, that, was, that was our bad, I think you'll find. But bonus Share shin. The burden. But bonus shin having a really good tournament. Absolutely. So far. Definitely. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was looking really good against Asim. Just uh, kind of, this is his first qualifying event. Just kind of just turns up, qualifies, and is now playing. I for think that's finals. one of the most impressive stories of this entire top eight so far. That bonus Jin just turned up, and he hasn't been. I mean, obviously he's a, a Tekken head, and he has been playing Tekken for many years. But the fact that he's turned up to his first UK Championship event and um, has actually made it this far, not only qualified but beaten players that have qualified already. And speaking of which, when bonus Jin fought against the Phantom earlier, bonus Jin was almost the one that took top eight winner side by defeating the Phantom. He was this close to actually taking out the Phantom and winners already. But Phantom being Phantom did come back um, and stayed composed, played really well, um, brought it back really. Yeah, so that makes this a run back from earlier on in the tournament. Yeah, it's a run back. But this is the ultimate run back. This is like, when the run back happens when it's in loser's bracket and it's way later in the tournament, that's when you kind of want to win more, right? Especially if you're the one that lost. It's like, well, you beat me earlier when it didn't matter as much. Now it really matters. I'm going to beat you all day. And that's, that's, that's really what you want to do. It is indeed. 
especially as I mentioned, you know, these guys want to go into the top 16 in London a couple of weeks' time with a hell of a message. But make sure, guys, while these guys get prepared, that you are getting involved in our social media discussion. Make sure that you're following Tekken on Twitter. You, know, you tweet us with hashtag T7UK Championship. And, uh, you know, this tournament is not finished. We have a whole bunch of matches left to go, but they're really, at this point, high profile matches. No, absolutely. But for those of you that may have just tuned in, welcome. This is the later stages of top eight the Tekken 7 UK Championship London Qualifier. We've gone to loads of different events around the UK, loads of different territories where, where Tekken is prime. And we've got three top players that have qualified from each event. We've been to Glasgow, Dublin, Birmingham, Manchester, and now in London. Our top 16 players are confirmed. We'll be seeing them again in two weeks' time at MCM Comic Con in London, where we'll be playing our UK top 16 to find out who will be our best UK Tekken player and crown them the champion. That's what this is all about. But today, we're finding out, because all our players that are currently still left in the tournament, they will be playing against each other in uh, two weeks' time at MCM. So now it's about showing that you can beat them before that event. You know, Showing that Kane and Trench isn't going to just win every event, that he isn't just going to beat everyone. That it's not going to be guaranteed. All that's going to happen today is that messages will be sent in yep. one way or the other. You know, The outcome, we'll find out soon because we have a bunch of matches left to go. We have the winner's finals. This match to determine who makes loser's finals. The loser's finals and then grand finals. So we've got Ru Kang, Kane and Trench, the Phantom and Bonus Jin all left in this tournament. Bonus Jin has had a hell of a run. Actually defeated Asim in the lower bracket, who has, played, has already qualified. So that's going to be a good feeling already knowing that you can defeat players that have qualified already. Um, and this is his first event for the UK Championship. Bear in mind, this is not his first Tekken tournament. Bonus Jin has been playing Tekken 7 for, or no, Tekken in general for many years. Um, I'm not really sure how much access Bonus Jin has actually had though to Tekken 7. You know, we do know how many, it's been playable at certain events, but the UK Championship is where it's really been at its prime because it's the most up-to-date build. But this is low, lower bracket action. This will be our final two out of three of the day. We're going to three out of five as this point onwards for winners, losers, and grand finals. So, this is the last two out of three set we've got. Bonus Jin running in aggressively. Bear in mind, these guys fought earlier in the tournament. Phantom took it 2 1, but it was super, super close. And Bonus Jin in the first game was looking super dominant. So, you wonder if he can actually get a dominant start now, but actually keep it going, you know, and remain dominant and take the set. We'll find out if he can do it soon, but right now, this first round is looking great. First round very comfortably taken for Bonus Jin. Bonus Jin is just playing out of his mind in this top eight period. Just looking like he really wants to take the whole thing. I mean, he's been looking good all day, but this is just like a different level to what we saw earlier. Well, sometimes the top eight pressure, uh, pressure can make or break a player, but right now he's really taking that and, and running away all with All that whiff punish as well. Bonus in spacing. Incredible. But it's a matter of, you know, Phantom who really likes playing that sort of um, slightly, far, slightly further away distance. Very hit and run style, but he has got aggression when necessary, but very defensive player. It's been historically kind of hard to open him up. No, definitely. But this problem, Bonus Jin has a round and most of a life bar lead, but running straight into the kick again. That's something we saw earlier on, Bonus Jin going for that tackle, but running straight into the Phantom's kick over and over again. But it was an adaptation that Phantom made later in the set. It's good to see that Phantom has actually remembered it, and he's still going for that option now. Um, and it's not like a fresh set once again. Yeah. These guys are having to adapt to what they've already played earlier in the tournament. All phases through, but Bonus Jin having none of it. Both players have rage. One more hit might seal it, and it does indeed. A second round for Bonus Jin. Wow, that's a good start. Oh wow, big damage. We're probably gonna get the wall in this as well. We do. Didn't quite get the end to it, but at that point he's done so much damage already. Really don't think he minds too much. Does he get the rising launcher? Tries to. Much better round for Phantom this time. Oh wow, sign things off with the grab. Now bear in mind, Bonus Jin has got rage. We might see a comeback here. We saw shades of them earlier on, over and over again, but the Phantom was able to keep his clutch. Ooh! There we go, the grab loses that. Ouch. Very difficult situation to come back from that. No surprise, the Phantom took that round. We're seeing Bonish stick out a lot of launches uh, in the neutral. He's really trying to catch that sort of wayward poke and just launch it outright. But it doesn't really seem to be preventing Phantom from pressing buttons. He seems to not really be phased too much. Oh, and there's the running tackle connects now. Leg break. Oh, no, the tech. I think that's why we see uh, Bonus Jin go in for the running tackle, because he's trying to catch the whiff of the uh, the retreating launch that we're constantly seeing Phantom go for. But the problem is he's actually running into the kick more than we're seeing it actually work, so I'm not sure if it's worth it anymore. Yeah, it may not be worthwhile. I mean, watch me eat my words and have it win the set, but 
Maybe. That's what <laughs> Maybe. Oh, big hit from Phantom. That could be the round. No, not quite enough, but that will be in. Definitely tie things up two rounds apiece. Final Just game round. one at the moment. Fight. And the fact that this is still two out of three, though, means that these oh. final rounds are like, becoming so much more important because you have less leeway to work with. Well, also, considering how slow these guys are playing this match so far, like winning a game at a time is going to be a bit of a grind. Yeah, you don't want to bring this two to two, playing really patient, and then end up losing it and have to do the whole thing again. And again, now, now the Phantom has done sufficient life. He's going to go back to that retreating defensive style, really make Bonus Jin have oh. to come to him. With the, well, dive kick, I suppose. Catch it again. At this stage, every hit matters. Oh, not quite enough to finish him off, Bonus Jin. There's the big block on the low, and the Phantom's patience prevails again. But you can see changing game style. The second Phantom manages to get a sufficient life lead, he starts playing that runaway game. He starts playing that defensive game. Until that point, he plays and brawls just like the rest. Both players, again, being quite careful, really looking for their opportunities to press buttons. And again, you can see that launcher that Bonus Jin really is sticking out. He's trying to catch a button press from Phantom to try and deter him from poking him down. We haven't seen a huge amount of the uh, sort of cancel pressure from Bonus Jin this time around. I wonder if it's because he's worried about the parry. It could be, especially if Phantom has Rage Art, because you know, that's that one button armored attack. Oh, oh wow, run into Rage Art? Is that going to work? Wow, not quite. I suppose asking, you shall receive. I mean, okay. I understand it though. The amount of times we've seen Phantom get like, a max damage rage art to either start a comeback or to just close out by itself. Now, starting the round off with Power Crush is actually quite smart. I mean, they both have quite decent range, but that's the first time I've really seen a round start of Power Crush in a very long time in any tournament for the UK Championship. So it's like, you know, definitely not something people are going to expect. Oh, wow. wow. The, the patience and then answering it while he was airborne. Really smart. I mean, a great read, but minimal damage though. Yeah, true. This won't do minimal damage. Catches a raw launcher big time right now. Drops it. Very unfortunate. On top of that, the drop has just put Phantom into rage mode. Back to back. Parrying through. This might be it. One more hit. Oh, no whiff punish on the launcher. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Clutch tech, though. Oh, <laughs> wow. Hops over. Almost completely whiffed, but the rest of the string is going to finish that one up. Phantom taking the second round. Oh, that's a great trade. Fantastic trade for Phantom. Are we going to get the wall on this as well? So much damage. Yeah, look at that massive chunk. And he has the wall pressure still as well. Oh, Bonus Jin hops over. Now he has the wall pressure himself, but Phantom trying to fight back. He's got a lot of work to do. And unfortunately, actually, the... Uh, oh, no, actually, never mind. Gets the counter hit. That's about to say, taking that grab put him near the wall, but doesn't matter. Not this time. Oh, wow. Oh, the stomp! Good stuff from Bonus Gen. He only has to take one round now, and again, he's going to tie things up. Oh, the whip again. Phantom being a little bit... ...nancy to whip punish these. But again, you just remember, right, that Phantom doesn't get affected by being rounds down. It doesn't phase him at all. But again, you've got to look at the life, right? The second the life goes in the favor of one, either player starts playing a little bit more defensively. Speaking of which, Bonish didn't knowing that he had to go in. He's really doing a good job. Good read on the Oki. Doesn't get the grab a little bit too early, perhaps. Maybe. Very even round at the moment. Bonish Jin needs this one to tie things up. Phantom needs it to bring himself to match point. But Mist does connect. Now that retreating cart, well, we're going to see that a lot. He's really trying to catch a wayward button. Hang on. Oh, the grab! The reset stuff's gonna take it! And one game each, Bonus Jin on one game away from getting the run back. Getting his revenge in the same tournament. But, I mean, it's just even. This is definitely either player's game, but the fact that Bonus Jin is able to keep himself calm. I mean, these, these haven't been stomped. That's, that's the best thing about this set so far. They've been two very close games. I think it's because both these players are highly experienced tournament players. They're really not phased by the pressure. However, as I say, that bonus gin, a fantastic start in this first round. Completely unrelated in pressure. Crazy good stuff at the moment. Phantom keeps himself alive. Phantom has got rage, but even then, the, the, the life deficit alone makes it quite a tall order, I think. Ooh, big rage drive. Doesn't quite get the, uh, the flip there. I think it's a little bit of a... I love like it hit the wall quite Yeah, kind of like a wall situation. 
However, this could have been the start of a comeback. Oh! That's gonna seal it. Oh, it's just again. I wonder how much damage that would have done had the wall not gotten away of that rage drive. I'm not really sure it was something that the Phantom was um, ready for when it comes to get catching the wall super early. Wow, pushback. Good throw tech. I'll say Buddhist Jin really staying on point at the moment. Only needs a couple more hits. Good blocks though from Phantom. This could be the start of something. Oh, confirm. Oh, not a full combo, but enough. Definitely enough. Both this gym brings himself to a match point. From being a game down to now match point on the Phantom. One round away from winning the run back. Well, we talked about going into the top 16 London final, sending a message. What a message it would be to get the run back against the guy that took you out of winners. I mean, that will just mean they're 1-1 one, one apiece, so that will be interesting going into finals it will in London. But that's if Bonus Jin takes it. Phantom, he's been on the back foot before. Yeah, of course, can't count him out. It's been two rounds down once or twice before. Has able to clutch it out. Oh, it's back turn though, guaranteed damage. That's not going to be a great start. Oh, big launch from the Phantom. He was just looking for that limb to punish. Absolutely. Really oh wow, the whip punish, the grab! Doesn't do it quite, the tech, the crucial tech! He's gone in for the power up, here we go, it's all or nothing! Catches it, oh the trade! Phantom gets tagged by the up kick and Puna's Jin actually getting the run back on Phantom! By the, again, another slowdown finish. How many of those have we seen in the top eight of the championship? I mean, it's almost like that's why they're in the game, right? I know, right? To, to put an exclamation point on those crazy hype moments, but... But that does mean our top three today is going to be Ruka, at least Rukang, Kane and Trench. And bonus Jin. I think that's great to see, though, because bear in mind, the fact that players that have qualified are in this tournament already means that we talk about how to make top 16, you've got to prove that you're still top 16 worthy, that you can still take on players that have qualified already, prove that you can beat them, and that is why you've earned your spot there. However, and, and I think Sparagin, sorry, not Sparagin, Bonus Jin, wrong player, has um, done a really good job <laughs> wrong of- nationality. Has um, done a really good job of proving that, you know, proving that he's he's well worthy of that, because he just defeated well, he, which he, is he, what a lot of people's favorite up, to place top in that tournament. He turned up and he beat every player that had already qualified. Exactly. And it's exactly right. can't really say fairer than that. And it's, I think it's proved that it's possible. It's possible as well. However, it's not over for Bonus Jin. He still has two more players to get through if he wants to win or take that And crown. those two players are Ru Kang and Kane and Trench. Ru Kang, Mr. 100% attendance. Did you know he's had 100% attendance rate? Oh. He's been at every single event. Amazing. He's been to every qualifying event. Indeed. But indeed, Ru Kang versus Kane and Trench. Kane and Trench, you, I think very, definitely fair to say UK champion right now. He's the, the one to watch and the one to yes. beat, undeniably. And that is because he won the King of Iron Fist UK qualifier many months ago, won hype spotting, and he won in Birmingham last week. He is definitely a many time Tekken 7 tournament winner and looking in winners' finals again today, looking to add another notch under his tournament wins. And he's against Ru Kang, a long time Tekken enthusiast, successful, consistent player. All around. But the one thing to bear in mind as well, which is um, pretty cool, is that Ru Kang and Ken Trench, as far as I'm aware, haven't actually fought in the UK Championship yet. I've, I've not seen these guys fight in the UK Championship so far. They've, it's, they've always been around the same element of the bracket, but Ru Kang has they've fallen been close, to... They just haven't actually met. They've been right next to each other in brackets, but I think Ru Kang has sort of lost the odd match that has just made it so they wouldn't fight, you know? Whereas now, because he's finally got his run back against the Phantom, he now has the chance for that fight versus Kane and Trench. And the crowd making the most of these thunder sticks. Indeed. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so while these guys get ready to go, got to remind everyone what we're all here for. Tekken 7 UK Championship London Qualifier. This is down to our final set of games, but we are now in a three out of five territory. Of course, we're now out of our two out of three sets. So we're getting later on the day here, later on in the tournament top three. We had hundreds and hundreds of players over the last five weeks across all the many tournaments in the UK. And uh, here we are, once again, Kane and Trench and Ru Kang.
So not a huge surprise to see them so far into the tournament once again. Definitely earning their right here. The more they play the game, the better they get. Kind of makes sense, really, if you think about it. So the matchup that we're expecting to see, and no doubt that we will see, is Yoshimitsu versus Bob. I think it's going to be to surprise over nobody, if that's what we see in action. No, absolutely. I mean, Rukang, Bob specialist. Kaden Trench has been playing Yoshimitsu. He swapped it away uh, at hype spotting particularly, but he hasn't done so since. Okay, so we talked about a quite a nostalgic stage for... Uh, Devil's Pit is quite a nostalgic stage for Kaden Trench. This really is the stage of which he obtained his biggest victory, which was getting sent to Japan and the King of Ironfish UK qualified, defeating really dangerous Korean player, Cherry Berry Mango, CBM. And it was, you know, I think the stage holds a special place in his heart at this point. That makes sense. But uh, will it be the stage he loses winners' finals on today? Will this <laughs> will that <laughs> fond memory be ruined in winners' finals? Well, Ru Kang will see to it. We'll see. It's gonna be a mixture of really aggressive rushdown from Ru Kang, but Kane and Trench, lots of tricks, but on top of great fundamentals. I think it's just all around important for these guys to show that to, to show everyone that Kane and Trench doesn't just automatically win every tournament he enters. Well, I think if Ru Kang can go into Grand Finals win aside and beat Kenneth Trench, it's a fantastic confidence boost, but he's got to do that first. There's the mix-ups of Helicopter Stance, and already the tricky stuff is going to take that first round from Kenneth Trench, looking very strong. Oh, challenging it. A nice little change for Yoshimitsu once again. That down forward two, much easier to launch now than it was once before. Oh. Oh, good wake up from Ru Kang, has the wall pressure now. Oh, but the big launch from Kane and Trench. But that's what Kane and Trench does really well in Tekken 7, is utilizing all of these new Tekken 7 changes. Those twin pistons, again, a nice option for punishing while rising, and Kane and Trench is using it every single time he knows it's possible. And just like that, two rounds already, we're gonna go downstairs to the infinite stage. However, really no detriment to Kane and Trench, he's still comfortable on an infinite stage. No, absolutely. It's actually more of a detriment to Ru Kang down here because he thrives on that wall, but now no longer has it. In the two rounds he did have it, he wasn't able to get much working. Wow! wow. Okay, answer. using the flash to punish the rise. Really good knowledge. You can tell these guys play in casuals quite often. There's a lot of work to do for Ru Kang, unfortunately. He's got rage, but it doesn't matter. Just getting poked down. Very confident and clean first game for Kane and Trench. However, this is three out of five. This is three out of five territory. No, absolutely. They have a little bit of time to work with, a bit more time to adapt. Kenan Trench looking solid as a rock, as always. Oh, stomp him. I think Ru Kang's really trying to establish the low threat, but he's trying not to dedicate to just as much of an unsafe option as he was in the first game. Oh. I really thought like Kenan Trench just... He uses almost the entire move list with this character, I swear. First round again, goes to Kane and Trent. Fight. Oh, big launcher. Kane and Trent once again. Oh, the low miss space. Looks like the UK is getting a lot better at making that whiff. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, he gets the negative. Uh, actually, he left himself completely open whipping that grab and completely opening up that unblockable for Kata Trench. Trying to be really patient. Oh! At this point, it feels like Ru Kang has no options. What does he do? Everything he's doing doesn't work. Kata Trench is ready for everything. Oh, wow. Another big launch for Ru Kang getting on point. At the same time, Ru Kang is showing. He clearly knows oh. what he's doing in the matchup, but Kane and Trench is just one step ahead of him. The problem with trying to crouch that um, down forward one, two, is that if you try and crouch it and you mess it up, you get counter hit and it gives him a full combo. No, oh, definitely. Speaking <laughs> oh of counter Lord. hit, big damage right here. This is looking to be a second game for Kane and Trench. Oh, wow. Gets the low slide as well, and Kane just looking very strong at the moment. I think at this stage, I'd at least go, I think I'd at least go for a stage change here. I mean, he clearly looks very uncomfortable. As soon as he gets down to that infinite stage, it's just more that Kane seems like he's got more to do there than Ru Kang. But it's also a comfort. Like, this is clearly a stage that Kane and Trench really likes. I'll just take it away from him just because. Regardless, looks like they've gone for the rematch anyway, so this could be our last match. Does get a launch. Good start for this first round. Trying to counter poke with the flash. Doesn't get punished though, so I mean, it's really scary knowing that Kane is ready for every single situation. Really poking down Ru Kang again, gets another launch. That's gonna be nice damage. Turns it straight into the tailspin as well. Oh, good tech. 
Liu Kang finally managed just to get the chance to go for oh, it. Oh wow, he low profiles ready. the grab. Nice. Oh. He uses the plus frames just to get that, guaranteed. And Trench. Fight. Now that's, I think that's when you know that Kenan Trench believes that he's conditioned Ru Kang to block there, is when he starts going helicopter off the 3-4. Because normally they press buttons, you know, whereas now there's no buttons being pressed at all. He can do what he wants. Oh, tech trap. Tech trap. Kenan Trench, I'm pretty sure I've never seen him go for that and not have it connect. Challenge from Ru Kang gets a chop. There's a block on one of it though. Oh. Good block on that forward, forward, four. Oh, the low oh, takedown again. It's not going to quite kill. Because he has spent his rage. That's why he went for the reset, I think. Oh, that's a good round for Ru Kang. That's the kind of stuff he needs. Important sidestep. An important round. He needs to know he can take rounds here. Oh, again. Delayed low again. Yeah, yeah that, trench. That's, second, that's the second time I've seen him crouch that grab and then unblockable him. Oh, Tech Trap once again works out. The flash wow. to punish to get up. Pounce. Another <laughs> Tech works Trap. Again. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Oh, and there's a Tech with a big grab as well. I mean, this is why Kaden Trench is the champion. He just has that knowledge. Oh. 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 That was just rude. Kaden Trench, match point wow. from getting into grand finals. Kane On Trench the winner's side. Rude, dude. Oh, gets the kick. Oh, goes to the flash, but doesn't quite get it. Has to be a full combo of that forward, forward, four. Big damage. Oh, Putting the sword, sword away. away. Now things are going to get a bit tricky. Wait, what? what's going on now? Lots of good things. Oh, still flash, and he gets the sword back. Wow. The flash, the punish once again. Two consecutively, and he moves into grand finals. Three games straight over Ru Kang. Caden Trench just tech for days. Absolute tech for days. This guy just has the knowledge. Is there anything about Yoshimitsu this guy does not know? I mean, bear in mind in Tekken 7, he's got a bunch of new stuff as well. It's already establishing all the knowledge that he's got on the character. And then you're adding all this new stuff from Tekken 7. But then you're also taking into account that Kane has had lots of experience at all of these events to really get familiar with what Tekken 7 Yoshimitsu does. So it's like, you know, you're taking already um, fantastic character specialists and you're putting on a bunch of new knowledge that he's more than comfortable with at this point. Well, this does take us on to our losers finals, which is going to be Bonus Jin versus Rukang. This is going to be a good one. Uh, I don't think I've seen these guys play before. Uh, actually, I actually don't think I've ever seen a Rukang. Uh, Rukang play a Nina period, so I don't know what to expect. But uh, Bonus Jin has had a really good tournament so far. He's just turned up today, having not qualified for finals, and has beat everyone in his path that has already qualified, as well as earning himself a spot. So we'll be seeing both these guys again in, in two weeks, regardless. But uh, if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, get in touch with us. Use the hashtag T7UK Championship. Let us know what you think. Is Kenny Trench just going to win again this week? Or are we finally going to see him challenged in Grand Finals? Well, it's, it's very easy to turn around and say in this Losers Finals, I feel like, you know, Ru Kang's just going to take it because he's got more experience and he's been playing really well in these other tournaments. But we really can't count out how well Bonus Jin has been playing today. This is his first event for the UK Championship. I don't know how much experience with Tekken 7 he's had prior, but today he's looking really strong. And you cannot count out. He's took out the Phantom today. He took out Asim today. Players that have already qualified and will be making serious noise at the Tekken 7 UK Championship Finals in two weeks' time. Bonus Jin has taken out some of these guys already. Well, he has got Ru Kang standing in his way of Grand Finals now, so regardless, he's got his work cut out. But in a 3 out of 5 setting, anything can happen. This guy is a question of who can adapt first the fastest. Ru Kang is going to be hungry for that run back, though. When a match goes the way it does like that, you really turn around and go, I want another shot at that guy. I want to prove that I can do better. Going straight in for Nina. Again, no surprise. Speaking of no surprises, Ru Kang going for that bob. I really don't think we're going to see him pick anyone uh, throughout the UK Championship. I don't think we're going to see anyone other than Bob when it comes to Ru Kang. I'll be very surprised, but you never know. Finals could do things. But regardless, he's looking the most confident of Bob, for sure. Let's not forget, this guy played Roger and Bob. Take a tag too. Bob came back. Indeed. So it makes sense that he's playing him. Get ready for the next battle. So once again, guys, this is Losers Finals of the Tekken 7 UK Championship London Qualifier. Three players left in this tournament. Bonus Jin, Ru Kang, Kanan Trench. Both of these guys want a shot at Kanan Trench. He's lying in winner's side on the Grand Finals. Ru Kang did just go down 3-0, and he wants that run back. Speaking of which, though, you know Bonus Jin really wants a shot at that as well. Well, they're going to have to fight for it. Ru Kang, with his first hit, gets a full combo. This is one a, way to start things off. This is a 3 out of 5, ladies and gentlemen. So it's 
Lots of games potentially ready to go. Oh, running right in. Oh, wow. Interesting trade. But that's, again, one of the changes in Tekken 7 where if hits collide and a trade happens, if one of them is counter hit, the counter hit properties actually still remain. Oh, big tailspin. Don't think that's quite going to do enough, but we'll get close. Nice damage off a grab nice. regardless. And that yeah. first round goes to Ru Kang. Trying to sort of dance around and tag him here and there. Oh. Nothing really significant coming out just yet. There's been a lot of blocks. No, a lot of blocks, but still piece by piece. Yeah, okay, low on life. But Bonus Jin does have access to rage now. Ru Kang has to be a bit careful, but still laying into him. Oh. Wow. It looks like Ru Kang just really hasn't given Bonus Jin a chance to do anything so far. He's been in complete control of the set. That's definitely his answer to, I think, to uh, Bonus Jin's getting a lot of mileage out of just this, this pressure and the counters and whatnot. That was a nice whiff punish from Bonus Jin, though. Really crisp. Oh, he has pressure as well on the wall. Catches the wall again. Big damage. Back to back. Two hits, just like that. 80, or call that 90% down. No crouch, though. Oh, but a perfect to respond. Bonus Jin still in this one, for sure. So let's see what Ru Kang is going to do about that. And once again, you can see Bonus Jin really trying to stick out those launches, trying to catch a button press from Ru Kang. Oh, wow, gets the mist, but no full combo. Twin pistons from uh, Ru Kang. Full combo. Wow, good grab attempt from Bonus Jin. Good read yeah, on the direction. Really nice Kang choice. Go. Nice choice. Oh, could be enough. Ru Kang needs one more round. Take this one. I feel oh. like Ru Kang. Wait, he's got Rage Up. He has. No, oh, he drops no, it. The drop. Oh, no, stays alive. Doesn't matter. Actually, oh. taking two rounds back almost just as quickly. One more round for each player to make it one game. And remember, this is three out of five, so plenty of work to do. Twin Pistons connects. Full combo. Respectable damage. Oh, gets the ball as well on the very end. Now, what Ru Kang needs to definitely do, Rhea, is just keep him in this position. Oh, the challenge. Oh my god, just like that, Ru Kang has taken so much damage. Oh no, catches it. Oh, the rage drive whiffs. Oh, he rolls out of he's the way. Out there. Oh, he's gone. Oh, the low jab is going to trade through. And once again, poor old Ru Kang just doesn't come off very well in these slowdowns, does he? Every time the game slows down, Ru Kang comes off worse. <laughs> At his expense. Every time. <laughs> So it slows down, you just put the controller down, you know he's not going to win the trade. Hype at Ru Kang's expense. A full combo for bonus Jin. Big damage near the wall as well. Doesn't quite finish it though, would have been a bit more. Oh wow, nice wall splat. Doesn't get a lot of damage though. I'm still recovering over how much damage Ru Kang took off. Just stray two hit strings back to back. It's just drained. Full combo once again. Speaking of which, wall pressure, big damage coming out for bonus Jin. Oh, catched him on the way up. Didn't even give him a chance to escape. Very comfortable first round for Bonus Jin. Oh, just getting out of there. I feel like this game plan of really trying to sort of play the mid-range and, and stick out launches to catch buttons, it's working much better for Bonus Jin. You can see Ru Kang's really trying to do the same thing, but it just isn't working out as well. Oh, that's going to work out. Gets the launching grab, full combo. Oh, big trade. Again, neither player can capitalize though. Wow, sidestep into launch and the rage. This is going to do big damage. The rage are just to seal it a bit further. Oh, How much damage? Hurt. Don't think it's going to KO, but it will get oh, close for sure. Oh, what's the setup? What's he going to do? Ooh. Oh, wow. A little bit anti, but in a little bit. I'm not so eager on the wake up of Ru Kang. Just let him get away with the low kick. Oh my god, the rage on the very end. Oh, big trade, ready oh, for combo off the trade as well, Ru Kang ready. Again though, bonus Jin has got rage. He may not have a chance to spend it. The punish comes through in two rounds for Ru Kang. Speaking of punish, and again, that jab does so much damage.
Does crouch the grab, but no combo. Speaking of which, another grab back to back and a full combo for Ru Kang. Oh wow, good wall carry too. But his gym manages to roll out again. Oh, hop straight over him. Kang really trying to establish the threat of that barge. Oh, whiffs it again. Wonderful corner. Oh, the first gym, but the Twin Pistons connects again. Ru Kang could win off this if he manages to maintain momentum. Well, the question is, what's the mix-up? Again, catch the low. And a wow. side step into the Pistons. Whatever you call that, just a big old punch on the side step, and it's gonna make it one game apiece. Speed and weight. Time. One apiece now yeah. for Ru Kang. One. Fight. I gotta say, again, bonus gin though, his composure's been really good. No, he's still not playing, he's not playing tilted, he's not playing like he's you know, panicking or choking, he's just consistently playing well all day. Ru Kang though, that was a very sort of heartbreaking first game to lose. The fact that he's been able to pull one back is good composure in itself. Now the rage is activated. Is he going to get a chance to use it? Maybe. That sh that shot oh, wow. really has so much rage. Deceiving rage. Oh, the wow. Line. Oh. Out completely out of nowhere. Ru Kang brings a full comeback. Again, utilizing that rage damage. He really seems, that string right there, he really seems to save it until the very end. Well, it's going to be that on the chop, surely. Indeed. Oh, which the missed. Oh, the side step just to keep him near the wall. Keep him where he wants him to be. Once again, wow. the shot coming through. Wow. And the low and the perfect for both. Ru Kang. Ready completely for this. Ru Kang around away. Bringing a 2 1. Relentless pressure again. Just not letting Bonus Jin get anything started. Yeah, it's definitely been a very different game to what I've seen previously. Bonus Jin looking a little bit. He's struggling a little bit. You can really see these strings from that far distance. I mean, like, some people would really would say, why are they just throwing them out? It's because they're waiting for the opponent to run in with the button, and they'll catch them mid-advance. Oh. Here comes Bonus Jin, really looking to take a round Oh, that's a, a really good trade for Ru Kang. Gives him rage, and the rage drive connects, and that will take it to Ru Kang 2-1 in yeah. this loser's final set. That was, uh... The thing is about that was that trade actually gave both players rage. So after the trade, it was uh, a bit of a... I gave them both rage, but Ru Kang had a heavier knockdown. Yeah, a bit of a Mexican standoff. Oh, catch him off the ground again. Bonus Jin ready to stop that. Considering caught, caught him airborne, though, big damage. And the punish on the Pistons. Not letting him get away with that one without getting punished big time. Throw oh, to that tech has actually put him in the wall as well. Yeah, that tech actually doesn't look like it's been too good for Bonus Jin. Then, as I said, though, still somewhat fighting his way out, but that string's going to put him straight back in it. And now Ru Kang has rage. He may be able to get a comeback on deck. Oh, yes, it connects. Ooh. Oh, Bonus Jin kicks his way out of the corner. Ru Kang is really looking for his moment. This may be the moment. The low kick comeback comes through in the first round for Ru Kang. Kang is laying in again. Bonus Jin not allowed to breathe. Oh, Ooh. speaking of which, running into the, the mist. mist. Yeah, jumping straight into it. I mean, you can clearly watches. see that the, the general game plan from far distance is the same for both players. Still Bonus Jin going for those jabs as wake up, trying to catch that wake up attack. Again, Ru Kang, he's been on the back foot before with this much health. Not this time. That gives the little dash. We've seen Ru Kang do that a lot. Quick sidestep into punch, Fight. but it didn't work this time. Nothing hugely substantial, though. He's going to get a little bit of plus frames off the jab. That's kind of it. Oh, almost chopping straight into the poison mist. Oh, momentum shot. shift. Oh, wonderful launcher for bonus gin. Nice check. The grab, the tech, but again, the techs put him near the wall with a rage okay, bob. This, this is dangerous. dangerous. It's a rage bob. Ru Kang has wall pressure. Chop. Just kicking him while he's down. Not allowed Not to him get, get off up. the ground. So rude. Oh, the oh, run. Oh, my lord. That was just rude on so many levels. Match point for Ru Kang. Rude Kang. Match oh. point. Losers finals. Another punish. Ready for the get up kick. Oh, oh. big crumple. Oh, trying to go for a rising launcher, but that's going to be a perfect way to answer back Bonus Jin. He needs this round. He absolutely
absolutely needs this round. Rukang wants to run back against Kane and Trench. The guy that sent him to lose his finals, Bonus Jin, just wants to continue his tear through the tournament today. Going into grand finals in your first event is a hell of an achievement, especially when you've already qualified as Bonus Jin has. Oh. Rukang's definitely not going to make it easy. The exchange, they go straight through. Oh. The twin pistons comes through. What a start. Just the wall carry. Rukang needs to keep this going. Bonus Jin needs to desperately get out of the situation. Massive damage coming out from the wall. That's going to be it. The launch comes through and Rukang sends himself back through to grand finals where he will get the rematch versus Kane and Trench. We have a run back on our hands. That's going to be exciting to see if Rukang can keep it through. Kane and Trench is wasting no time. He is immediately sitting back down. <laughs> we have our grand finals ready to go We're and it's going to be it. another three out of five. Bear in mind, this time round, Kane and Trench is on the winner's side. Rukang has double the work to do. He's got to win two sets. I must admit, I, I really like the attention to it though, because like the, the second that set was finished, Kane and Trench was standing up, ready at the desk with his pandas like, right, let's go. Grand finals, Rukang, you know he's riding that momentum on that last round, going through to this grand final. Before we get this grand final underway, guys, just remind you all... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Just remind Continue. you all what we're doing here. Oh, I'll get back to you later, I'll get back to you later. What we are here for today is the Tekken 7 UK Championship London Qualifier. This is our fifth and final qualifier. We've been all over the UK, and we are here now. I've decided our last three players, they're already good to go. However, we have a grand finals on our hands. Bear in mind, whoever wins this is going to be going into our London Comic Con Top 16 Finals in a couple of weeks. Whoever wins this tournament is going to be the final champion, riding all of that momentum going into that Top 16. Plenty of stuff to play for. And bear in mind as well, whoever wins today's tournament, the lovely people over at AOC are providing a free monitor, an AOC monitor to whoever wins this tournament. Kane Trench already has one because he won last week. But he might get another one. Him having a second monitor would be pretty neat, I think, actually. Getting two monitors not, to stream not with. Not bad for two weeks' work. Not bad. Two monitors to stream with when Tekken 7 comes out is going to be good as well. Right, Bear in mind, but guys. Well, that's, that's if he wins again. Exactly. And while these guys get set up, Tekken 7 comes out on June the 2nd. It will come out on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. And if you pre-order the game, which everyone should do, I recommend everybody go out and pre-order this game right now before game Grand Finals get started. You get access to a bunch of costumes, access to Eliza for free, which is a really big thing right there but anyone who's going to compete I mean you really need to get this game pre-ordered if you don't can get it pre-order it Xbox One PS4 and PC no reason not to get yourself some free stuff well that brings us on to our grand finals for the day until our top 16 London MCM finals in two weeks time there is one more set to play and that is this grand finals between Kane and Trench and Ru Kang indeed it is Kane and Trench a winner of the King of Iron Fist UK qualifier Many months ago, winner of Hype Spotting, winner of our Birmingham qualifier, looking like to maybe being our London champion as well. Considering he's in grand finals, winner's side, but Rukang in his way. Rukang wants that run back. These guys did fight in winner's finals, and it was very one sided. Kane and Trench dominated the entire set from start to finish. And a player like Rukang, who's been playing as long as he has, and is as passionate as he is, is not going to be happy with that. He's not just going to accept that result as it is. He's going to want to fight it back. Now, get the run back and prove that that was a one-off. It was a fluke. It will not happen again. Rukang has already had revenge today in that he did manage to get his revenge on the Phantom. The Phantom had defeated him in previous tournaments and he's defeated him today, which is why he's in Grand Finals. So let's go. This is Grand Finals of our final qualifier. Kane and Trench versus Rukang. Bob versus Yoshimitsu. The question is, can Kane and Trench be stopped? That is the underlying question everyone wants answered. If he goes into the top 16 MCM undefeated. finals, utterly undefeated, then 15 people need to be very concerned. Round one, fight. So here we go, starting things off. We saw Kane and Trench just have all of the answers in winners finals. You wonder if, if Rukang can just adapt to what's going on, but Ultimately, Ken Trench just has so much knowledge with Yoshimitsu. He pretty much uses the whole moveset. Oh, wow, goes through the ground. Now, Rukang already has quite a lot of work to do. Does manage to get the wall, though. Big damage to answer back. Oh, gets the wall again. Two wall splats in one combo. Wonderful positional awareness oh. from Rukang. Yeah, that's a big whiff on the get-up kick. The back 2-2 two -two easily going to take that first round. Doesn't matter that he had rage at all. That 3-4, such a really good tracking tool for Yoshimitsu. Nice mid as well. Good block. Oh! 
not overcommitting. Wu Kang just taking that one hit and leaving it as is. That is going to give a tailspin for Kane and Trench, though. Big damage to answer throughout. That oh, wow. this is the ground. Oh, patience. Plus frames. Patience from Wu Kang once again. A little bit of a hit, and that's going to tie things up one round apiece. Signs of life from Wu Kang, definitely. Bear in mind, those three games are pretty much completely like one sided, round after round. This time around, Wu Kang looking a little bit better. Oh wow, and that knocked it through. Full combo from that wonderful Kane and Trench. You can tell this the guy. Damage he just got off that. Uh, you can tell this guy plays a little bit of Yoshimitsu, can't you? Another tech trap works. I think I'm yet to see that miss when Kane and Trench does it. It's because it really demands that you just stay on the ground. Most people don't want to, and immediately with the crouch, Kane and Trench not letting that slide unpunished. That's going to be the round. Oh, not quite. I'm fairly sure every BNB that Kane and Trench got in that match, he extended with damage. Every single one. With uh, some kind of wall or floor oh, extension. Oh, wow. Full combo off the reverse, unblockable. Again, I mean, Wu Kang, he's still got lots of work to do and the punish. Gonna get that guaranteed damage. One of the new changes again of Yoshimitsu completely whiffing his rage drive. And there's the punish from Kane and Trench, just ready for the rage drive. Very strong game one from Kane and Trench to not a huge surprise. This guy is just ready all the time. He just has that knowledge, the knowledge on his character just shines through. But it's not just knowledge of his character. It's knowledge of <laughs> Kane everyone else's. Chuckling to himself, seeing that the stage selector's given him a wall of stage. I think it's because he knows he'd rather have that. If he's against, if he's against Ru Kang in particular, Ru Kang's Bob, who really thrives on wall pressure. I know that's you know most most players do prefer walls anyway, but, but Ru Kang specifically does. But the way Kane and Trench plays, he doesn't necessarily need that wall. Like no. he has such a Round good uh, grasp on Five. just reads in general. And you don't need the wall to do tricks with Yoshimitsu. You know, he doesn't need that kind of positional advantage because the infinite is just as much of an advantage in different ways. Speaking of which, though, Ru Kang has a strong lead in this game so far. Being really patient, but again, all he really needs is something really significant because he's got rage. It's the stomps. Oh, trying to go for the rage drive. It's pretty quick, but not fast enough. That's a whiff. No, nothing full though. Oh, the big crumple. That's a full combo for Wu Kang. Trying to really keep that sort of mid-screen presence, I think. Doesn't want to send him too far away. And Trench being very patient. Kind of looks like he's being really aggressive with the amount of run-ins, but he's just running into a block, knowing Wu Kang's going to press a button. Speaking of which, trying to answer back for that down forward one, two, and again, getting hit by the counter hit instead. The Pistons connects, but has to do something a little bit smaller, airborne. That was a really nice confirm from Wu Kang, realizing he was going to get the full combo. Had to cut it short. Good Shot. follow up. Oh, oh no! no. Walk straight into it. That's it. That's it. Wonderful awareness from Ken Trench. Gain the extension on the damage from the rage drive. It feels like every single time Ken Trento goes for like some sort of quick option, he's just ready for it to hit. Like, the second it hits, he's already in there. Like, it's such a bold wow. read. Yeah, Speaking of spin. bold read, just a raw launch like that. Look at the damage he's getting off of it. Oh, back to back, another counter hit. Really trying to interrupt the uh, roundhouses right there, but unfortunately it doesn't work out. Otherwise, a trade would have been good, but not when you're that low on health. Rotec as well, Kenan Trench, just get hit by it. Oh wow, goes for it again, Ru Kang with the cheeky stuff. I'm gonna get a combo here. Has to really go for that splat though, because he can't afford to go for any sort of wall carry, because there is no wall. Good blocks, Ru Kang, oh. Wow! Oh wow. That was just good awareness, Kenan Trench knowing that Ru Kang was gonna try and press a button, and that's exactly why he tried it to evade. Oh no, another hit. Oh, so Kena much damage. Trench. Tech for days. Everything resulting in so much damage. Launchers, crumples, count hits, everything. One thing just chains into the next, which chains into the next. He knows exactly what he wants to do. It's like he's three setups ahead of himself. This could potentially be our final game, though, and by far our fastest grand finals to date. But Kane just looking thoroughly unstoppable right now. And the wheels are turning. I don't know if he can be stopped, but Ru Kang doing a good job at showing that he can still take rounds here. He needs to keep this going. The problem is Ru Kang coming from loser's bracket. Kane and Trench is two games up on him. He needs to win three games in a row just to reset, not even to win this tournament. Indeed. 
catches the takedown, another full combo. Everything leads into so much damage, into more setup. He's gonna give Ru Kang rage, but I wonder if it's enough. Unfortunately, is not, and a perfect for Kane and Trench. Oh, there's the whiff again. Nice, good answer. Oh, that's actually a nice damage confirm as well, considering. Oh, walk straight into it. Oh, a big launch. Yeah, good awareness, knowing that's punishable. Really trying to take his buttons oh. when he can get them. Try to stab Bob in the head. Another launch over Kane and Trench. Putting Kane the sword damage. away. He's going to go for some of the unique stuff now. Oh no, and again, another rage drive, but whipping the takedown! Doesn't matter, catches it anyway! Not quite sure what that was that uh, Kenny Trench went for there. This is very tense, running straight into that mid kick. And just like that, it's tournament point for Kane and Trench. Oh wow, what a start. Big damage. He's in his face, you can tell Kane and Trench, he hits you. He wants to turn it into another combo, another oh. reset. Big damage coming out from Kane and Trench. This could be the sequence that wins him the final qualifier. Oh, he goes for the plus frames. And that's guaranteed! Oh. Kane and Trench once again taking another tournament and our final UK Championship qualifier. With a perfect as well. Does anything, is there any fitting, more of a fitting finish for Kane and Trench than ending the final qualifier with a perfect round? No, definitely not. I mean, that, it says it all, doesn't it? It says it all, doesn't it? I mean, does that does mean that Kane and Trench is walking away with this tournament the absolutely undefeated champion of the UK as it stands. He just has one more championship left to take, which is the final stages in two weeks' time at the MTM Finals. He's done as well as you could possibly do in the qualifiers, but the big finals is in two weeks' time, May, I believe, 26th, Friday of Comic-Con. Friday of Comic-Con, be there, watch this finals with us. We'll be there, the 16 best players in the UK that have spent the last five weeks grinding Tekken 7 action, getting as good as they can get. But for now, that is all from us. We will see you at Comic-Con in two weeks' time. Thank you for watching. We hope you all enjoyed the show. Do not miss the finals in two weeks' time.